Good evening, Star fans. We are coming to you live from the Opal Sector, where the stars are bright and the asteroids are anomalous. The weather outside is a balmy negative 455 degrees, with a high chance of gamma ray bursts in the early to mid-afternoon. Let's lengthen the weekends together, everyone. Welcome to Tales from an Infinite Verse. Wait, wait. Uh, all right. Hey, hey, we're here. We made it. This is not correct. This is the wrong thing. We made it. We're here. Got it in one. First try. <laughs> all right. Uh, thanks for holding, everyone, as we dealt with technical difficulties. Uh, so welcome back to Tales from an Infinite Verse. Um, I've got a big old recap to go through, but before I do, I'm using a uh, <laughs> big old recap. Uh, before I do that, uh, I'm going to do, we have a bit of housekeeping to do because we forgot uh, at the end of last session to tackle experience. And because I'm using a new music platform, I am going to go ahead and play a song, uh, play a cool little space track on the in the background while we do this so that uh, I can... Uh, we, we can make sure with you guys. So chat, um, hit us up. If the music is too loud, too quiet, let me know. Now's the chance to do some level tests. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and put on some nice, uh, chill, flying through space music. And we're going to see how that goes down. Uh, okay. Uh, vroom. Uh, so uh, with that in mind, we need to uh, deal with experience. So how much experience does everyone have so far? Two. Two. Okay. So I believe our first level up is going to come when you get to five experience. Uh, and then everything thereafter will be one experience more for each consecutive level. So uh, let's check everyone's experience tracks and see how we did. Um, let's start with Sean. Uh, Sean, what is your experience track? Uh, mine is a Forgotten Places Excavated. I think that that last session counts. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We, we totally, we did the uh, like literal shovel and pickaxe and excavation, <laughs> not just uh, not just walk into a tomb like shovel, you know, pickaxe, some lasers, explosions. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. we, we, we we did it was, all the way. Grunt work involved. All the way. Um, fantastic. Okay, so that's one experience there. Um, Dan, we'll go to you next. Uh, we did not match my advancement track. A life is saved or destroyed by science. Uh, not quite yet. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there one day. Um, chat, let me know how the music's doing. Um, right now, it's just kind of, uh, it's kind of a level it's going to be set at. Um, I can always modify it as needed throughout, but uh, I would like to just have a general level for it. Uh, also, how the voices are of everyone else's voice compared to mine, because I know I don't want to be too loud of a boy. Um, so just let me know. Um, great. Um, and, uh, L, uh, what about, what are you? What was your advancement track? I'm trying to pull up my sheet right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to Ethan then. Ethan? Yeah. Uh, mine is A Breakage Occurs, which, uh, I think... Oh, yeah. Uh, the entire ship's power, if you recall, actually. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I was like, I'm not sure if that counts as a breakage, uh, but I would. I count that as a breakage. Uh, all right. So it's another experience. And, uh, Aaron? Uh, mine is a ludicrous stunt turns the tides. Uh, can't hear the music. Okay, great. Hang on. Okay, that should have adjusted the levels of both you guys and of the uh, music as well. So let me know if that is any better. Um, and uh, okay, ludicrous stunt turns the tides. I don't think this time. No. Okay. I, do you, anyone recall? A, a, I mean. Please, I would love it to be no for once. <laughs> We've literally, Aaron had two <laughs> sessions, so it's you're you're one for two right now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, L, how we doing? And audio, how we doing? <laughs> Just, <why? laughs> Still work is work in progress there. So. I... Okay. Be oh, it, I I remember it. Yeah, it's it's that uh, passengers were delivered safely or something. All right. So not as of yet. So two more experience. Um. So we're up to four, which means with any luck, we should be uh, leveling up by the end of this session. 
Uh, cool, 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 cool. All right, um, L, let me know when you're good to go with character sheet, and I'm waiting to, uh, um, L, also, you're a little, a little quiet coming through with, uh, on chat, uh, and that's also just for us, you're a little quiet, so if you just want to, like, either turn yourself up or come a little closer to the mic. What about me, chat? How do I sound? <laughs> you sound great. I know you sound great to us. Um, oh, okay. And are we hearing music at all yet? Also, thank you guys for working through this with us. Uh, tech, technical difficulties are technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. Right. Is this better? That's better. For, yeah. yeah. So it's better for us, which means if they can hear everyone else, then we can probably hear you as well. Okay. <laughs> this is the what I'm sure is not revolutionary at all, which is bringing the Twitch audience along for a uh, sound check because it's the only option we had. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the behind the scenes. <laughs> Tales from an infinite tech problem. <sighs> okay, oh, I told my channel that we'd be. I want to do behind the scenes one day, so here we are. Uh, <laughs> behind the scenes. <laughs> uh, okay. Still just waiting to get a last word. Uh, uh, okay, great. So we've got ambiance, we've got voices, we are good to go. All right. Uh, let's do it. Okay. Um, I sound great. Wait, wait, wait. Everybody got their dice? Everyone yep. got their dice. <laughs> yes, let's make sure everyone has dice. dice. There we go. There we go. I didn't want to catch one person. <laughs> <laughs> All right, grab the dice, and I will get the recap started as soon as L is back. All right. Uh, and I'm going to keep this... Uh... Oh, I didn't turn repeat on. Dice Oh, you're killing it. I'm gonna keep I kinda like this this ambiance I've got. I know you guys can't hear it, but I'm I'm digging this vibe right now. So I'm gonna leave this on for the recap. Uh alright. So we all good? Last yep. time. Previously on Tales from an Infinite Verse, our fearless crew continued attempts to explore and survive after an emergency landing on an unknown planet. The planet was revealed to be home to a creature called the Pain Ra, a folkloric horror known as the universe's most dangerous natural predator. While Captain Farilark hunkered down at a strange monolithic stone platform, Science Officer Rovatse began to investigate the structure further with help from the other from the medical officer Halcyon Hulson. Meanwhile, Ace Pilot Halifax DeWitt went to check out the other crashed ship and met a man named Briar Illick, who claims to be there hunting the Pain Ra, which single-handedly wiped out his entire home planet. Briar warned that he cannot protect Lark's crew if he doesn't have a clear line of sight on them. The crew regrouped at the monolith and found a strange glowing lump of unidentifiable exotic matter, while the ship's mechanic, Talon, hid in some trees as cats are wont to do. He rejoined the group after a close encounter with the Pain Ra, who started knocking down the trees Talon was perched on. Briar Illick sent a shot towards the Pain Ra that seemed to scrape off some of its flesh, which the crew collected before making a hasty retreat. Back at the ship, some science ensued, leading to inconclusive revelations about the Pain Ra and the exotic matter. Is the glowing lump of space rock some sort of tracking device? Is the Pain Ra's flesh non-Newtonian? Many of these partially answered questions got overshadowed by the power going out on the ship as the Pain Ra approached, and the crew being forced to the top of the ship to avoid pitch blackness within the ship itself. There, a decision was made. With the Pain Ra seemingly attempting to lead the crew to a distant temple-like structure, it was decided that if the Pain Ra wanted them dead, it would have killed them by now. And one by one, the crew left the starship, their starship, the Freya, behind, and followed a dark path into the jungles of the moonlit planet. And that... Follow the Chupacabra! And that is where we <laughs> left off. So, I'm gonna do a quick... Ooh, that pause was very abrupt. I'm sorry about that, uh, audience. I'll work on my fades. Uh, but we're going to go over to this, and we are going to begin our game. So, we find the crew walking through the jungles. The jungles are not terribly dense on this planet, uh, and yet the colors all seem a little less inviting now under the moonlight. Again, there's five moons over this planet, so it's bright. There's no lack of ability to see, even at night. But it is still a little bit ominous. Every shadow that the moons cast seems like it could be moving at any given point in time. Uh, the trees are silent. The usual rustle of wind is absent. There's an eerie stillness as you make your way through the jungle. I would ask you, I was about to say the first part of the trip happens in silence, 
But that's a question for you guys. There's no outside speech. The people, your NPCs, uh, Gammon and Vexius, uh, are not talking. The faint uh, hum of the flyer that Talon is operating uh, is, of course, uh, making some noise. But otherwise, it's pretty quiet, aside from you guys. So are you guys staying in silence, or are you discussing or talking about anything as you walk? Silence it is. Okay. Yep, policy and... <laughs> Nope. The silence is pronounced and lasts for some time. You've got a bit of ground to cover before you get there. Uh, you have many miles to go before you arrive at the, the place you assume you're being led to. But each step at least brings a little confidence that you're probably not going to get killed in the middle of the woods by this pain raw because, yet again, it hasn't done it yet. Uh, and that alone seems to be reason enough to hope that you're safe for the time being. The first thing... There is a chance it could be playing with its food. It could be playing with its food. Uh, Set the couch. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you would know. The first... I know very well, yes. The first sound that uh, breaks the silence um, is your comms. Uh, a radio signal comes through. Uh, you guys recognize now Briar's voice clearer than it was the last time he reached out to you. Uh, and you're just going to get a... Anybody out there? Do you I'm turning mine off. Which is everyone just when silent, I, just off. Yeah, when I see when I see Pharaoh do that, I'm just like, are we able? Is it uh, able to only silence him and not like the rest of us? Um, if we need to. He's right now. It's kind of broadcasting to all frequencies, which is how he reached you in the first place. Yeah. So you okay. can turn it off. You can turn it down and like just do like a headset thing if you want to hear, but it not be projecting. Um, I'd imagine if we can do that in today life, there's no reason your space comms couldn't. <laughs> go down to only within your ear kind of a thing. Send a fax. Um, so are you guys still hearing him, or are you just muting him right away? I'm, I'm still going to hear him. Okay. Yeah. Halcyon would also turn the volume down. Just in case. On him, but just keep an, just kind of keep an ear out, just in case he says, like, I'm going to shoot you guys. Sure. Like that. Um, all right. So um, another about five seconds pass before he says again, he goes... All right, well, I'm boosting the signal pretty hard. I've rerouted a lot of energy to do this, so I'm hoping you can hear me. My scanners are picking up some movement through the jungle, and it's slow, which is unusual. I don't have a super clear shot, uh, but I just wanted to make sure that, you know, it wasn't you guys. Uh, now, as for why you'd be moving through the jungle in the middle of the night, I can't recommend that. But if it is you... You should probably say something now, because at this pace uh, the movement is going, I'll have a clear shot in about 15 seconds, and I don't want to miss it. All right. <laughs> I'll see on, uh, if you will. Um, yeah, I'll... Uh, or, um, or Hal Halifax, did you, do you want to take over for this? Because you already kind of have a yeah, rapport. Yeah, I meant Halifax. <laughs> no. Hi, it's us. Don't shoot. We're fine. Uh, you're fine. You're fine? Yes. <clears throat> All right, well, quick question for you. What are you doing? He's still talking. <laughs> Thera, who just muted this conversation right at the beginning. Uh, yeah, Captain, he's still talking. Uh, apparently, he picked us up on his scanners, and um, he's tempted to fire another shot in our direction. Uh, he other doesn't know if it's in the payroll or not, and he's looking to open fire in 15 seconds, so we should probably stop right now. Uh, yeah, everybody stop well, moving. If I'm... we tell him it's us, which we have, I, yeah. he has no reason to shoot. Agreed. And Agreed. also, what we're doing is... Uh... For science! Uh, yeah, it's... it's it, <laughs> we, we, we are currently... We are... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? We're surveying. That's it. Surveying. <laughs> it's also none of his business. And as I say that, I'm going to turn on my comms as, so that he can hear, like the end of that and i'm gonna say like it's none of your business it's none of your business who are you like don't shoot us 
we're walking. I'm not going to shoot you. Not okay, great. walking here. <laughs> excellent, excellent. We are turning our comms off now to preserve energy. And uh, wait, I are you sure you want to... Uh, <laughs> turning mine off. Is everyone else? Is anyone else still listening or no? No, I didn't turn mine off. I'm still okay. listening. Uh, he says. Uh, so he says. Are you sure you want to do that? I look. You'll forgive me for being a little a little nervous because it kind of is my business. I've been playing a, t a hide and go seek with this thing for a long time now. It's not afraid of you. It's afraid of me. And if it's not killing you, it means it needs you for something. This thing's smart, and. The fact that if it has a reason to keep you alive, if it's doing something and leading you somewhere, then it probably has a way to use you to get to me. So it kind of is my business, and you'll forgive me if I'm a little bit nervous about that. Captain, are you... <sighs> Fuck's sake. So, let me ask you a question. You've been in this area for long enough. Do you know what that temple is in the distance is about? Oh, yeah, I know exactly what it is. It is a mess of corners and angles and darkness that would be impossible to train a shot for. It's the ideal hunting ground for the pain rot. You haven't explored it further than that. What part of ideal hunting ground did you... Like, I couldn't. How... He's afraid of the dark. It's okay. Did you, did you say that over comms? Yes. Okay. Uh, there's radio silence for a second, and then you hear, All right. Keep doing you. And the comms go dead. Fuck right off. God's almighty. What did he say? He said, Where we are going is ideal hunting ground for Bain Ra. Okay. Noted. <laughs> I don't see why it would lead us to ideal hunting ground when it already has ideal hunting ground right I was here. Gonna, I was gonna say, ideal hunting ground, you mean everywhere? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Also, the only one with the gun out right now is him. So, as far as I'm concerned, the only one hunting is him. I just hope we're all ready to die for artifacts. And he's gonna shut off, he's gonna shut off his, um, Neuromask, and he's not gonna say Neuromask anything. powers <laughs> down. Uh, there's always a weird tingly sensation when you do that. Just gonna, as the power ceases to flow through it. Okay. Uh, so you guys uh, continue to walk in silence. Uh, I mean, you've talked now, so the silence has been broken. I think every once in a while, um, if you want to maintain the silence, oh. someone has to nudge Gammon, who starts just to be like, mm, 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 starts like humming some sort of tune in their head <laughs> uh, as, they, as they go. Um, but otherwise, uh, yeah, the journey the journey continues. Uh, as I said earlier, it was uh, many miles to cover, um, so I think it is probably going to take you a few hours to go. Um, but you're not disturbed the whole time. There's no more X's in the trees. There's no more movement. There's no more rustling, and it's a pretty long day night cycle, all things considered. So you the night doesn't get too far along. Uh, at some point, you might stop just to like have a swig of water, do what you have to do. Um, but you uh, you keep going, and we can fast forward this whole travel montage. I'm not going to make you uh, not going to make you sit through all of this for four hours. I'm not going to make our poor audience sit through this for a few hours, as you uh, can. I would like to talk. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Talon, you have anything you want you want to say or get? So, what does everyone think we are being led to, and why? Any questions? Any ideas? Theories? Cautions? Concerns? Voice now, or forever hold peace. <laughs> Um, I mean, dude who's compensating with a big gun is probably right. The, if if he's right about the temple being all in darkness, it is a prime hunting ground for the pain raw. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it looks like that's exactly where we're headed. This is true, but... Why require prime hunting ground when adequate hunting ground is just as good? Exactly. It's literally right there. Concerned about the hunting ground being his, not the payras. Exactly. So why are we going over here? 
I'm not at liberty to It say. is not ideal for him. It is very unideal for him because of all angles. He has no shots. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Now, personally, I it feel is opposite that the, of ideal for him. the recovery of that sphere, and I do regret calling it an egg, that was very... Um, we were all thinking. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 it, it, it did. It did jump to a few conclusions that that maybe I should not have made. But the 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 artifact um, that we recovered from that smaller temple, it's possible that it can't interact with it directly, or it would have just killed us and taken it, right? Perhaps. Like if if we're the ones who are meant to carry it, or are expected to carry it by it, then could indicate ritual, Possibly. some ritualistic behavior. Yeah, I, I, I know, I know uh, religious ceremonies is basically we don't know what this actually is for in, in amongst archaeologists, but still. <laughs> That's a valid Yeah, point. but leading us off into jungle did not guarantee that we bring whatever it is with us. We could have left it on ship. But we didn't. We brought it with we us. We didn't. This is true, but... I think that had, means that Pain we... Ra had no way of ensuring this. Well, I, I think that means that we're on the same page, that maybe perhaps this is something that belongs to them and not to us, and we're returning it. So there's a mutual understanding without needing to talk to each other. If it belonged to them, then it was already in te one temple, and we are simply transporting to other temple. Maybe the first thing wasn't a temple, per se, but a storage, storage? Yes, I was spot, about to say, yeah. you know? Like, I don't know about religion. I know that bodies break, and I can fix them usually sometimes. But maybe this is, as uh, Ro was saying part of a ritual and we happen to be a part of that and I don't think there's any use in asking what would happen if we didn't have the Ovid artifact mm -hmm. because we Rituals have it that you need other people outsiders for to do all the legwork for are not good rituals at risk of oversimplifying uh, Merrick is going to speak up <laughs> Uh, he's been very quiet this whole time, like for the majority of the planet since the pain rock came up. Uh, and he's, I think, just had worn a general look of concern on him. But he says, at risk of oversimplifying, it's possible we're just pawns from all sides. These, if these, regardless of rituals, oh, these two have been locked in this for a long time, if what he, Briar says is to be believed. So my question is, my training always teaches me to evaluate the threat. That's what I'm supposed to do. I want to make sure I see what is the most dangerous and be able to handle that. I've been really quiet because the uh, pessimist in me said it was the pain raw and we were just doomed and that was that. If that's not the case, which we have to assume because otherwise death speak, and it's Briar, if he's the biggest threat and we are pawns for the pain raw, what does Briar do next? What's his next step? Assuming if he truly believes what he said, the pain rod is going to use us to get to him. What does he do next? He's going to try to kill us. Then why hasn't he? You can't get a good shot. He just said it. He said well, no. in 15 seconds he would have good shots. It has been more than that. Yeah. The reason why he the reason why he hasn't taken the shot is maybe he hopes that he doesn't need to. So what would he do instead? Because if I were in his shoes, I wouldn't stay put. I mean, maybe I would stay put, but you know what I mean? Like, he has to adjust. I mean, it's not like our ship can get more broken, right? Mm -hmm. Fair. Either I <laughs> it can get more broken. <laughs> I'll take your word. I don't know ships very well. Um, he's either going to get into a position where he can take a shot when he figures out whether we're on the Painra's side or not. Or he's going to lay a trap. Something to think about. He already believes he has most advantageous position. Mm, at least yeah. possible for him. And he's afraid to leave it. 
So, yeah, he's but, he, he's not going to stick out his neck just in case he's wrong. Here's the thing, though, and this is, and um, Hal, correct me if I'm wrong, but he didn't want to move from that position because he he was in a place of a, a position of power there. Oh, so he's tethered gun. to his ship. Exactly, but since he knows or at least has a big hunch that the pain rot is with us, that gives or him... Or leading us or whatever. ...a level of flexibility in where he could be. So now he has more of an option to leave if he wants to. He's but that's at the very him. same... Go ahead. <laughs> He's tethered to where he is, not just because it's his main power source that he's pulling this big fucking rifle for, but also because he's being surrounded almost on all sides by the pain rod. So they're both at a stalemate. Also, if he were to leave to deal with us in whatever fashion he seems fitting, uh, that still leaves him open to pain ra, which he does not want to do. I just wanted to make sure we didn't need to adjust our plans at all, Merrick says. I just, I just want to see Temple. <laughs> Agree. I also definitely want to see that Temple. I just and, want to get out of here. And if if we are part of some sort of ritual... You know, I'm, I'm actually kind of reminded of just animals who have their... Or animals or plants who have their... Um, uh, who have other species carry aspects of themselves for reproduction. You know, like burrs, right? Uh, what if this is just a complicated version of that? I'm I'm not a I'm not very good with fauna, so <laughs> it is egg back on it being egg? Well look. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Who's carrying this thing by the way? I guess Paul uh, is cool 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 cool. Yeah. Um, look you start to feel a crack. <laughs> I don't know it about explodes. I don't know about the rest of I don't know about the rest of you, but my species, this thing is very egg shaped. Okay, <laughs> we lay a whole bunch of them. <laughs> this size? I'm impressed. Oh, good God, I hope not. That would be terrible. All right. So you guys. <laughs> That'd be hard to pass. <laughs> we we could discuss the theories all night, but uh, let's uh, unless there's like active like changes in anyway, Let's keep this uh, keep this plot rolling. Uh, so, you, uh, you talk more, now knowing that you are, or at least hoping that talking is not making this any worse for you, you, uh, continue, uh, with the eerily silent night that's going on, until, uh, a couple hours of travel later, uh, you make it to another clearing. Uh, this becomes, uh, open sort of like the place Briar landed, and sort of like the place where the little monolith was. Um, and you see this uh, temple-like structure. I call it a temple only for like stereotypical reasons. I know we kind of leaned in that direction, but like that's the kind of like the jungle temple ruins is sort of just like the vibe it has. It has the same sort of slightly slanted upwards shape that the other one did, but this one has some clear entryways. There's doors that go into it, I shouldn't say doors, uh, archways that go into it, the same sort of sandstone structure, there's stairs that lead up to it, it has sort of like a Mayan temple sort of vibe. Um, some plants are starting to overgrow it, but it is, for the most part, fairly well kept, all things considered. Much like the other place, while a little bit buried, was still, like, intact, nothing's really touched this in a very long time. Even the plants don't seem to want to go too close to it. You guys are currently in the tree line just before stepping into the clearing, uh, moving your way towards the temple. What's your what's your move? Do we see this thing still? The t the temple, the pain rock. You've never seen the pain rock. We never saw. You've never. No, no. We, uh, sorry. Do we do we still have the the uh, impression that it is still leading us forward? You it... have not gotten that impression since your first steps through that axe. You've been walking in that line, sort of hoping it was the right direction and following a fairly straight path, but mm -hmm. uh, you've not actually seen hide nor hair of it since then. Uh, Captain Lowe, I'm requesting a short amount of time to set up my uh, surveyor's kit. I've 
badly packed it, so the you know, telescopic legs kind of sticking <laughs> <Yeah>. out. <laughs> Look, no, no camping gear leaves the camping area as well as it entered. <laughs> so um, uh, I've got it. I'll, I'll help. Um, Hugo is going to come over and give you a hand. Uh, sure. Eager so, for a distraction from all of this. <laughs> I, I'd like to get at least a, a good, I mean, it's not going to be a three-point geo survey, but at least a one-point geo survey of the temple to give us an idea of composition, age, perhaps how far down it goes. Uh, sure. Uh, let's get our first roll of the night going, and I'm going to have you roll assessment uh, with uh, expertise because you were using this, uh, this system for it. I think. All right. Uh, oh no! I, I don't tell me I closed the tab. I apologize. There it is. Uh, as expertise, all right? Plus one. Yeah. Ooh, uh, one of the three. That's a four plus one five. Okay. Absolutely not. So you, this. I mean, I say perfect in that it's perfect for the storytelling, not perfect for you. Obviously, very much not perfect for you. <laughs> you get to set up um, and begin your cursory scan. And I would say before the scan downloads, moments later, in the distance, you hear the the charging up, even from this far away, and firing of Briar's gun. Now, you guys are probably about 20 miles away. It's going to take probably about six seconds to get to you at the speed this laser is moving. You guys all have very limited time to react. As for exactly why he fired unclear. It could be he got the signal and thought it was bad news. It could be he had a shot at the pain rod and took it, but you have to assume it's coming at you and you have six seconds to get out of the way. What is your play here? Aside from just uh, running, which could, is also a play. Halcyon decides to book it into the temple. Okay. Because it's probably the safest place. Uh, yeah. At the tree line, you're probably a good like 50 feet away. Uh, at the speed these shots take to Rigo, you could probably make it in before another shot gets off at the very least. Um, but we're, we're at the tree line? Yes. I assumed. I will jump up into a tree. <laughs> uh, you're going straight up. Uh, House Gun's going into the temple. Halifax? Um, I'm probably... I'm going to book it too, but definitely more of like... More so to get out of the way than to like go in a general direction of like... This is my objective goal to reach this place. It's more of like literally run as fast as I can and then dive to, like, reach that extra, like, foot or two run, that run, could run, save Gotcha. Ass. So this <laughs> is a, basically a Hail Mary shot. His accuracy is not great on this, so it's going to come down more to luck than anything else, and you guys do have some time to prepare. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make all of you roll uh, face adversity using finesse to get out of the way, but I'm going to give all of you advantage because you do have, this is not a super pressing thing. I mean, it's very bad if you fail, but you it's not super <laughs> difficult to get out of the way, so I'm going to give you all advantage, but you all do need to roll it. Mm. Can I wild jump? <laughs> <laughs> I'd have some questions. Tell, her, Captain, tell, you, what, tell you what, Captain, if you get hit by this laser, you might just. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and it's finesse? Yes. There's a um, uh, career in Far Beyond Humanity in the expansion nice. that actually could have wild yep. jump without a oh, ship. Oh, I was looking uh, over all those. Was, They're a lot of fun. Do the teleport circle, <laughs> yeah. But it took a while to do. <laughs> all right. Bye. Oh, I'm at minus one finesse. This is going to be... Um, oh, no. So uh, I, no, I, I would no. say that as far as, as far as Rose is concerned, like, I'm like, I want to run, but... If I'm true to his character, he's probably just going to hit the emergency. Is he's going to hit the emergency thing because he's got his his uh, environment suit that he always wears because he always okay. afraid of of yeah 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 getting into bad situations. But it does it's not armor, right? Like it's it's environment. Uh, no, but you do you do have one armor from uh, your captain, who provided you. Everyone has plus one shielding. Yeah. Um. So yeah, he's going to hit his environmental suit and just throw himself, he'd curl himself into a ball, oh, uh, right. which is oh, no. basically, Holy uh, poly. yeah, uh, on, on top of, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Hugo. Just oh, grab oh Hugo, God. take it to my chest and then roll into a ball. Okay. Uh, <laughs> great. Let's go through these rolls one at a time and I'll describe what happens all at once. Dan, what do we get? Uh, I got an 11. You are phenomenal. Uh, Halcyon sprints into the temple and vanishes into the darkness. Uh, 
Sean. Hey. Oh, well, that uh, advantage really actually helped me because it, it saved my bacon. Uh, that ends up being in an 11 with the microphone. Wow, all right. Wow. <laughs> um, uh, Ethan? Uh, the the, the hmm? bonus dice. I do a triple safety. black flip into the tree because I got a Goodness, gr- <laughs> y'all crushing this. Uh, L. Well, Captain? Bitch. Captain. This is... Phenomenal. Uh, so, <laughs> as this laser comes screaming through the trees, knocking things down, blasting away pieces of forest, you guys uh, clear out. You go down. You hunker down on top of Hugo, and then Gammon hunkers down on top of the two of you to like putting himself in the putting themselves in the way. Um, Merrick Dot is wherever the captain Dot is. Merrick's gonna stick with uh, Lark, and you all just sort of scatter. And as you do, like it cuts between, like in the clearing between where uh, the people who ran past are now. And the people who stayed with the scanner relay, and it goes past and peters off, taking out a few more trees on the way as it passes. Uh, and you guys take a quick stock of everyone, and everyone's okay. <laughs> Crushing who it. Who died? Damn. A- anybody injured? Uh, Damon does one of the like full body body checks. We're good. Uh, he, That's amazing. I, how did that happen? I think, I, I think I'm dying. You hear Hugo. He's not wounded. He's fine. He's just no! he's just shaking. Be- he's beneath, beneath a pile of people just like curled up in his little cricket self, just not not having any of this. Uh, his, so his carapace, that, I think I'm dying. His carapace has an actual like function where when he curls up, it really is very like pod-like, just in that all of his parts are sort of uh, curved anyway. So he's a little, a little cricket ball right now, and he is just... <laughs> a brightly colored <laughs> ball of mess. Um, yeah, sorry, Halcyon, go ahead. Yeah, so Halcyon, upon hearing Hugo say, like, I'm dying, uh, Halcyon will, like, just trot back out of the the temple. Sure. Still carrying the ed- egg. Yeah. And go over to check on him and just kind of, like, ro- like, fe- like, just lightly pat his shell and kind of, <laughs> like, roll him around. Hugo, you're you're fine. Am I? You're fine. Um, physically, yes. Emotionally, sounds like a no. But <laughs> we can talk about that. On I the want show. to go back into space. Uncurls himself. <laughs> so do we all, Hal? Not Hal. No, I'm Hal. <laughs> he sort of chuckles. And Hal is Hal. He chuckles at this. Um, everyone's named Hal in this crew. Statistically, you have a twenty-five percent chance of guessing right if you say Hal. Um, <laughs> um, okay, uh, so you guys uh, come back to yourselves. Uh, you don't know if he's going to take another shot or how long it's going to take, but I'm going to say by now, a preliminary scan has finished. Um, considering the consequences didn't damage your survey kit at all, Ro, you can't get much um, from that, but you can get something. The preliminary scan shows you that what Briar told you was true. You can only get like about 10, 20 feet in there because there's so many walls and twists and turns and the same material of stone is really messing with your telemetry. So you can't learn much from it out here. Um, You can tell that there's twists and turns. You can tell that it's big and it's, uh, there's definitely lots of empty space, but you're not getting any more than that from the, from the scans. Maze. All right. Record, you know, print, mm-hmm. save. <laughs> All right. This will be useful later. We can analyze it and maybe, you know, have a bunch of uh, theorists go over it. But M- Merrick now. is now watching the cut through tree line uh, and is going, guys, come on, and like <laughs> gesturing like, we have to go somewhere. Uh, just kind of watching the... Merrick's right. Uh, um, is, is, is um, Halifax, where are you? You're with me, right, in the temple? You made it in the temple? Halcyon. Um... No. Halifax. Halifax. Okay. No, I didn't go in. I was just like more so like I gotta I gotta dive bomb out of the way. So okay. probably so he probably just did like a barrel <laughs> roll and then like looked at like where like the trajectory was and just kind of was like, Okay. Yeah. We're good. But I'm not too worried about like sp- specific positions. You guys are all about clear of the shot. You can I am. Uh, I'm pissed. So if Merrick is going to guide everybody in, I'm going to step out of the temple and turn my comms on and ask Halifax, what's this guy's name again? <laughs> um, <laughs> what, it was Briar, right? Mm-hmm. Briar. Briar? 
Uh, you hear... You've now gone well beyond the capacity of your short-range comms to reach his signal. Even if... And he said he was rewriting power to talk to you, so you have to imagine his signal is not boosted anymore. If he if he can hear you, he can't respond. You don't know if he can hear you or not. That's fine. <laughs> um, Briar, if you can hear me, if you fire another shot at us, I swear to God, I will send my raging gun fanatic lunatic after you to take your gun and obliterate it into space. So don't do that again. I swear to God, I will do it. And I am turning it off and I'm going back in. Uh, Everybody get inside the temple. As you're going into the temple, Gammon, who is like literally picking up Hugo, is going, is that me? Is that me? Shoot again! (laughs) 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 Uh, And you guys uh, can make your way inside the temple. Uh, All right, cool, 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 cool. Um... And, uh, great. Can you, um, no, I don't need any role for that. That's okay. Uh, you said, you said what you said. It's, it's out in the universe. I said what I said. What I you said. did. Um, I'm not repeating myself. Uh, you guys, it's fair to say you have like flashlights and stuff. We discussed this before. You guys have light sources, lanterns. When you, I also have a star sword if we need the extra light. That too, for <laughs> sure. Do you want to? It is actually very dark in there. If you want to, if you want to like a glow, you have a star sword. You can do that. All right. Abby. I am a cat. <laughs> you are the pilot. Um, stepping into this uh, structure, you immediately see the sort of like kind of curving nature of it as it kind of goes. The You can see it like as far to the end of the star sword illuminates and then it could continues, but then you can sort of see it sort of turn again. There definitely is a maze-like element to this. Um, there's also two other things you notice right off the bat. There do appear to be some sort of pictograms, like the one you saw on the side of the monolith, but uh, there's more of them, and they sort of follow the walls going inwards. Um, but you, before you get a chance to delve too deep into what they could mean, you also see towards the end, just at the edge of that uh, light the star sword provides, you see three beads of red light in a triangle pattern for just a moment that then vanish. Are they the same beads of light that I saw earlier? Uh, you saw them pretty frantically in, in something of a rush, but on top of the ship. giving you the same vibe, yes. Okay. Um, do they look like eyes? Do I see better in the dark? The only reason, um, I don't think you see better in the dark, but I think you see slightly better in the dark than most people. Um, oh, yeah, I didn't mean, like, better than normal, but, like, Yeah, I think you can I'm see, normal. you can, just, as long as it's not pitch blackness, you can probably see. Um... To answer your question, do they look like eyes? Um, the only connection you have is that you the, the last pictogram you saw, which you assumed to be one of the pain raw, had a, a three dot like triangle that looked like where its eyes should be. So they it isn't the same pattern as that triangle. So I mean, they would have described pain raw in, in like stories and stuff. Right? It never talked about its eyes. It never talked about its physical description. We actually What's had a fan it? last week ask about it, like, oh, it was never described. It was, it's shadow, it's horror, it's a hunter. No one ever was able to, the idea is if you saw one, you were dead. So no one has ever managed to catch a glimpse of one. Cool, real Babadook. That's fun. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, oh, I can change the music now. Wonderful. <laughs> I forgot. I have a new, a new track for this this place. So, you guys are in this hallway now. Uh, you've got some pictograms to look at. Um, there is a lot this time, actually. And to see the full... It seems to be, like, old, like, hieroglyph style, where, it, like, it's different ones going down, so perhaps it's telling some sort of story or expressing different points in time or something like that. But you would need to go deeper in the temple to see all of them. What are, you, what are we doing? Um, Ro, you're taking notes of all of this, right? As much as I can, but let's just say that I'm slightly distracted. I really want to stop and examine everything more closely. I'm doing my best to be a good team player, (laughs) knowing full well that this is killing me on the inside. (laughs) I understand. I don't... I don't think we can take too much time. That's the captain's call, but I don't think we can take too much time with this. Oh, no, I, I totally understand. You know, horrible creature might want to kill us at any moment, etc. Uh, or and who would know that we discovered us. this? Then we should take our time with this, right? If it's going to kill us, inevitably. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's here. 
you guys are now wholly inside the temple uh, with no possible way for, based on vantage point, Briar to shoot you. Meaning, if this thing was trying to get out of his line of sight, it's out and it could have killed you. That said, you had there'd been a lot of talk about rituals and stuff like that. So if it's trying to do a ritual where it like sacrifices you, who knows? Do you think That's you could comforting. like translate pictographs or anything? I'd give it a try, but oh, I mean, this is this is. Do I dare? <laughs> the symbols are I mean, the symbols are primarily yes. pictures. Um, so you you can right. see smaller images of. Uh, you can see, like, even very bluntly, the pain Ra is in the first one. Uh, you can see this this thing uh, from, it's kind of the same front angle that you always see it from, uh, just, like, head, head on, uh, that sort of sun-like thing. Um, and I can tell you this much, uh, in the first one, at the very least, you can see what appears to be people below it. If they are people and it is any sort of size to scale, the pain Ra is horrifically large, um, because it's, like, stick figure level of people, like, all, like, as if they're holding it up in, a, in some sort of way. Uh, and they're like a couple of inches, whereas the pain rod is like two feet on the wall. So it's yeah. like, it would be horrifically large if this is to scale. Um, rather than make you, uh, rather than like describe every single one of these pictograms in detail and make you parse it together, if you want to like roll for a general, like piece it together kind of assessment, I'm happy to then describe what you see based on that. Um, sure. Yeah, yeah, that 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 would probably be for, be for the best. Mm. Um, so, muttering to muttering to himself, Ro is going to basically, you know, start start taking notes uh, of like, okay, and if this means this, that that you know, like, so you know, the potential for um, exaggeration of shape of, of size, meaning importance rather than actual size, is very common in these kind of mm-hmm, things. You know, mm-hmm. like. Uh, depicting something as huge because of the fact that they have a big presence rather than they are actually that size and then of course i get to pull the whole aziz light kind of uh, thing from uh fifth element of what was like i need i need proper <laughs> proper illumination and uh yeah. hugo um, will be so, yeah. hugo will be right behind you at all times making sure that in the star sword is giving general illumination hugo is giving specific illumination whatever you need Yes. Uh, as part of my engineering kit, I have floodlights. Fantastic. Oh. You guys are bathed <laughs> bathed in light. You're so good. So light. Everything is light. Um, okay, great. Um, go ahead and give me an assessment plus intellect. All right. Here's, here's open. Four, four, plus two, so that's, that's ten. That's ten, baby. Um, you can figure this out. Uh, and once you get the gist of how it starts to work, uh, it'll be easy to kind of follow along. You will need to go deeper in the temple to learn the whole everything, but I can give you the gist as it goes, and I'll tell you at what point you have to go deeper to learn more. Okay. The This is a story, and you're starting from the outside. This is a timeline. Uh, and the start of it is not the... It's not a pain Ra. It's not the pain Ra as in uh, singular. It's the pain Ra as in species. You start to realize okay. that there's multiples. Um, there's actually many, many pain Ra. And they and the people who you'd imagine are the ones doing these uh, drawings, then again, it could have been the pain Ra. You've seen him carve before, so to speak, uh, seem to start on this place together. And that stuck. They lived together. You see a society being built between these people and the pain Ra. There's no sign of any violence between them. There's no, uh, even anything that it begins to depict any sort of discomfort or aggression towards each other. If anything, there's some other uh, creatures that look more like akin to like weird bears or tigers, and we can see the pain rod protecting the people from them. What's up? I am going to use my deduction here based on um, the size, shape, and general build like stonework and that kind of mm-hmm. thing of the, the the temple itself plus the carving style who or what caused this i'm trying to figure out if the humanoid uh, i'm assuming they're humanoids like two they, legs, two they look to be yes okay so that, how they are depicted the humanoids depicted are they the ones who built this, or did the pain rod build this? Uh, like, or did the pain rod species build this? 
Uh, and that's the thing. I, I, I'm not even going to burn your deduction move because this is going to be part of your assessment. You would have learned that in a minute. Sure. Um, so okay. sit, hold on to that question. Um, both. The pain Ra had in la- were in very large part the carvers and the movers. They would uh, lift heavy things and carve them into the right shapes. And the people who have more of the fine motor skills would then actually build the bricks. You can see this happening. You can see these temples, these places being built. It is very much a joint team effort between the two. Okay, so Painra are capable of uh, construction tool use and, uh, you know, cooperation and that kind of thing. And it seems to be not just a, like, beast to masters thing, but rather actual cooperation. Right, yeah. I am going to narrate all of this and use my education power. Ooh, good. Everybody has a data point about the fact that the Painra is, or at least the species of the Painra is capable of higher thought and construction and that kind it's of thing. phenomenal so and a data point if you, you. Go cooperate probably you'll be able to spend that that data point if you actually have to interact with it on a social mm-hmm. level i would say on any so, level if you interact with pain rot in any way that requires a role absolutely okay. so we have a, we you have a data point to spend. excellent thank you so you i love that you continue to narrate this um that's knowing that and seeing the construction of this stuff is as far as you can get without going deeper into the temple all right, yeah, that's that's so yeah, that's that's what I got. All right, <laughs> I invite those with tougher skin and more intestinal fortitude to go first. Uh, <laughs> Very <laughs> well, crack, I shall go first. Knuckles. <laughs> Halifax and Talon just zoom, uh, and gamut, and gamut, of course. Uh, Gammon is just. Oh, I'm not zooming. Gammon is. I'm just cracking my knuckles. Gammon grabs one of. <laughs> Gammon grabs one of Talon's floodlights and <laughs> got it. <laughs> just forward straight away. Um, Big eye roll. You continue. Um, you round corners. You uh, occasionally go upstairs uh, through doors. This place is beautiful, but doesn't seem to serve much of a purpose, and you're not seeing the purpose in the story yet. Uh, I will continue because you're seeing more pictographs as you go. Um, the first conflict you see in this story is not between the pain raw and the people, but rather it is a lack, a wanting. You can see resources dwindling. You can see the society struggling to get by. And so the pain raw leave. It's something that they are able to do, and the boogeyman stories tell you that much, that they can go, that they can uh, travel the stars, and they return with supplies. They come back bringing their people what they need. Food, construction supplies, everything except for, you don't see any signs of technology. You never see them bringing back tech. You never see them bringing back uh, like guns or weapons. It's always just what they need to thrive. But as the story progresses and as each kind of out and in happens, a few less pain rock come back every time. Uh, you continue towards a place where you think it seems like you're nearing the end of the story uh and you see um at one point in time they stay gone longer the people start holding rituals ceremonies they build the monolith you saw as a beacon so that the the pain may find their way home they wait for their the pain to come back and they don't. To finish the story, you'll need to go, you're now at a set of doors that lead into like what, based on your travel so far, would be the center of the temple. Uh, the doors are sealed shut, made of stone. Uh, you, don't, they don't, you don't see any handles, you don't know if to push or what the deal is. There's no, no like writing or etching on these doors, they're plain flat doors. Right, so this is this is one thing that one of my professors covered uh, quite considerably back when I was still at the academy. Um, would somebody who has a bit of knowledge about, say, mechanisms mind checking that door for any extraneous, you know, squishy, oh, crushy... Talon, go ahead. Uh... Squish, crush, shoot, zap... <laughs> uh, Fire, ice. <laughs> give, give me assessment intelligence. Intelligence record. This one's intelligence. This is uh, just noticing. Okay. What's my intelligence? I think it's 
Uh, you know, you are looking explicitly for traps. I'll have the expertise. I'll allow it. Yeah. Our captain will be back in a moment, guys. Don't worry. I promise. I promise they're fine. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's a eight. Eight. Um, so let's see. Uh, you learn important info potentially with consequences. Okay. Um, so I think what you're going to learn is this. Um, you don't see any traps or anything which is like going to kill you here. But you also don't see an easy way in. If you're going to get through these doors, it might have to be through force. Uh, whatever is meant to open these doors is not present. There's, or it's not present from this side. The mechanism is not there. Um, there's no good way to do this uh, that you can see. There's no immediate dire consequences for a mixed success on this. I can just give you this. It's not, not yeah. deadly, but you don't have a way in. Can I try something? Please. Hello! We came, what are you wanted us? We're here, can you open the door? Yeah, good try. <laughs> um, I would never have thought of that. <laughs> Alphax is gonna sheave his sword so there's less light. Okay. Um, I think taking after this- My floodlights are still off. Uh, oh yeah, well Gammon's gonna turn his off, uh, taking after that. Um, can you, um, you know, I, I don't think I need to overroll this. Uh, a moment passes and you hear, and the door begins to slide open. Uh, inside, uh, welcome back. The, the door's opening. Perfect. Sorry. You're good. Is, I, I would say once like the door is completely open, um, Halifax would like redraw his sword so that we can see. In I mean, my floodlights are still going. <laughs> inside. Well, the floodlights, no, the floodlights were way back there. We had set them up at the beginning of the... Well, I, since they're part of my suit, actually. Oh, my suit, yeah. My suit just... is integrated into my suit. Oh. So they oh, kind of yes. just come with me. <laughs> oh, you've got, like, the huge shoulder pad thing? Yeah, it's... that's what I assume. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> um, oh, my God, I can't even look at you. <laughs> stepping inside... You can see the last of the, the pictograms on the walls of this very large chamber. This chamber appears to have two kind of like crisscrossing stone bridges going to the middle and then drops that go deeper under the ground. Um, and to what end, you can't exactly tell. Um, but you can see uh, the pictograph continues like on the floor going forward as you see the people dwindling and dwindling and dwindling without the resources they need to get by. And after the last one has faded, we see one single pain Ra return to the planet to find its people gone. Your floodlights cast more light around the room and you can see down in those pits and realize what you're in. Again, I'm still kind of rolling off the 10 assessment roll we had. You're in a tomb. You see, lining the walls, kind of indents, carvings, where there are these stone, kind of coffin-shaped things. The people here look to be small. Uh, the average coffin size is about maybe four feet, five feet tops. Uh, and they're lining this place. But you also know this must have been done after they passed. This was done by a single Pain Ra, paying respect to its society. So, are we to assume then that the Pain Ra did what they are did what they are um, uh, accused of doing as far as destroying other civilizations in order to steal to like recover resources? Definitely sounds that way. I'm on yeah. Yeah. A okay. raiding society. The Hello. sound <laughs> echoes through the room, and as you guys turn, you can see at the end of one of the other bridges these three red dots again, but they don't vanish this time, and as your lights turn on it, they don't shrink back. Standing before you is a creature perhaps not as immense as the pictograph would lead you to believe, but certainly not small. This thing 
would almost look like a wolf if it had legs. It is hovering at the best of at first glance. It's coated in this black sort of viscous fur that almost drifts antigrav style behind it. It has the kind of it starts with a close to a point forward where the eyes are just above and then just cones out and sort of goes back in an almost cylindrical shape. You realize it's not actually floating. Every so often you see a kind of wisp of this black uh, kind of energy bounce down to the ground to keep it up that it seems to be resting on or balancing on. But the whole figure seems to be in a state of flux and it appears that it's almost like more of a like gaseous form, but it does appear to be like this fur of a creature. It is approximately the size of a very, very large horse, like if you were to double a horse in size, that's the size we're talking about. Not quite elephant. So like a like a rhinoceros. Little bigger. Um, it's definitely daunting. Uh, it towers over you, uh, even though it is clearly a long ways creature. But it stands, it takes no motion, it does not move to attack. It stands and it observes you. Uh Halcyon kind of, it was kinda of had the the artifact like under one arm just for ease of carrying and at this point just holds it forward in both of his hands it's like we have this i don't know what this means to you but it was buried and i think if i'm understanding things correctly this was your beacon uh as it moves towards you uh with startling speed uh you can see those wisps of energy take more of a solid form as almost leg-like appendages sort of bend out, but it moves more like treads where it hits the ground, slides back as the body moves forward and then mm -hmm. recedes back, sort of like almost crawling forward in that way. It's very... <laughs> I hate that. Oh, my God. <laughs> that is... Awesome. <laughs> oh, it's very it's really cool. It's <laughs> very fluid in the way it moves. And it kind of slows as it nears you. And it takes basically what would be its nose and puts it on this beacon and pushes it back to you. Before taking a step backwards. You want us to keep this. Okay. It settles down, kind of lowering oh. itself, seemingly like before it was, it was ready to move, it was on guard. It sort of lowers itself so its body is resting in the ground um, where the fur kind of splays out a bit more as it does, making it look more like a mound than anything else at this point. Um, and just sort of settles, continuing to look at you it's guys. A, can we it's a shadow loaf! <laughs> I'll see him like half turns to the captain and is like, can we keep it? <laughs> I knew, I knew that this... <laughs> I am... Um, does it look like it's settling for, does it look like it's settling for one of us to, like, get on, so to speak, so that we can place it where it wants us to place this thing? Uh, I don't, I don't think You we... don't have a way of reading its expression in any way that I'm aware of, um, nor do you, I mean, you don't know how much it understands about what you're saying. Uh, no, but, like, oh, I'm not saying any of this. I know, I'm just... Is, is it... Is it is it settling in the way like a a horse settles when a saddle is put on it, or is it settling in a way like a giant lap dog that's like pet me? <laughs> oh my god! Um, if like how is it there's, settling? There's no a bit due to this the way its body is composed and the way it sort of looks and rests. There's no s concrete way of knowing it. But if you had to associate it with one of those two more than the other, it would be the lap dog one. Really? <laughs> it's, it, 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 it did not. Like it didn't any way like turn to like allow you to like present its side or anything. And uh, it is just sort of just like again, it's just sort of it is settling in general. I think it's. Uh, I think the best way to put it is like it's not going to threaten us and it's not going to kill us. Probably <sighs> right. So, so if we assume, and we we should, that they are sentient, intelligent, capable of advanced reasoning uh i mean architecture for example it turns to look at you uh, as you're talking ro yeah. uh, like ro immediately starts like fumbling over <laughs> his words like um um he's like looking for cue cards <laughs> uh, oh gosh i just uh, look at the pain Ryan and i go do this for yes this for no 
It watches you. Do you do you understand? The way its head moves to do this, as you say, is almost jarring. Because again, this thing doesn't seem to have too much of a like specific form it needs to keep. So when it nods, its fur almost trails behind it like it's floating in water and but it does not. Okay. Oh boy. Um Captain. Uh, I would like to officially take a step backwards because I am used to dealing with things that have been dead for several millennia. Uh, <laughs> I was going to ask how weird this is for you. <laughs> I am not. I, I, I am not a first contact specialist. In fact, none of you are. We're we're doing things very badly right now. You've uh, you've done incredibly well, and yes. You've... You can take t- as many steps back as you need. <laughs> I think we're Good. all uh, in over depth here. My home planet I mean... is roughly eight million. <laughs> no, <laughs> Not no, that far no, out. no. <laughs> um, but how would just kind of like step forward, kind of interpose himself between Ro and sure. uh, the Pain Ra? It's like, well, I'm a medic. I know biology. I can't say I've ever dealt with anything like it's gonna this, I can... settle back up a little bit and move a little bit towards you again and turn a little bit some of its um sort of weird goop fur falls away to reveal what appears to be a wound you can see the place where it was hit um it is sort of near the lower part and the fur was kind of covering it before and it is now holding it out of the way revealing this sort of just dis- it's still black, but it's just kind of more liquid goop that you can tell is definitely like a different thing than the outside. Is that the stuff that was in That's the, the thing? stuff on the ship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the stuff we have. Do you have it with you? Okay. Did... I don't believe we did. No, it's still in the I think we... field. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's still in the unlidded Rubbermaid container. Right, right. Because right. it cannot be contained. If we attach... And I'm kind of talking both to Hal and to the thing, to the pain raw. If we, can we reattach your missing pieces together to heal you? (sighs) Okay. Well, that's back at our ship. It recedes when it hears that. Goes back into loaf mode. Because that's what we're calling it now. Look at Ro. (laughs) I'm gonna throw, and I'm gonna say, is this how you feel all the time? Like when you when you have something like exciting, like scientific happen to you? Is this is this how you feel all the time? <laughs> I don't I don't think he knows how he feels right now. I I want to ask if it's okay that I study the building, but I can't communicate with it. Is it okay think... if he studies it, the building? It nods. It nodded before it, he even, it, before you even asked the question. It seems to understand you. It, yeah, it seems to understand us. I um, already asked if it amazing. understood us and it said yes. So, Bro, me, if, you'd like to, back. <laughs> if you'd like to take as many steps as you'd like around the temple, you sure can. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do that in a very respectful way. <laughs> it doesn't stop you. And I look at I look at idea. everyone else, especially some of the some of the more excitable crew members, and just do the fish equivalent of this. I guess I have to set the eyes <laughs> on the side. I have to do it like that. <laughs> but like, in a respectful and non damaging way. Gam- Gammon hangs their head a little bit. Um, Hugo is going to stick with you. He's been sticking with you, and he's like wouldn't dream of damaging anything. Um, Vexius is still in the flyer uh, and has also been pretty quiet during all of this. Um, Merrick has not come like to the center of the room where you guys are yet. He's still standing by the door, like just watching this whole thing from a distance. Um, Halcyon would, at this point, kind of like crouch down, set the egg beacon off to one side and um kind of just very slowly and very carefully like brush some of this fur out of the way to get a closer look at the injury um if it lets you're going to reach towards it and merrick's gonna say stop before you get there it immediately turns to look at him and he says sorry it's your call and it's the captain's call 
But as someone with experience with something, knowing where people are, the legends say that if you touch this thing, it can always track you. Well, if what Ro was saying is true, and the their, the civilization's legends are true, and it seems like this thing wants us to have this beacon, that can happen anyway. Your call, Captain. He leans back against the wall. He's just sort of wary. Actually, it's Hal's call. Okay, that answers my question. Thank you, Captain. Mm -hmm. um, but Merrick, I, I do appreciate your concern. I do. He nods. Even though I'm going to touch it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and Halcyon would once again kind of just very slowly and just more so keeping an eye less where his hands are going and more at the pain rod's face to kind of see if there's any reactions but moving very slowly and being like i'm going to try and i'm going to look at the injury and i want to see if there's anything i can do right now before we get to our ship to make this feel better again no expression so very very hard to read um <laughs> but i'm gonna go it. ahead and have you um So I'll give you this for free. As you move okay. your hand through this thing's fur, it almost feels like it's moving around you. It's like when you, it's like that uh, thing where it's like a certain, like when you get, when you waterproof something and pour water on it, you see the way the water like wraps around not actually touching it kind of a thing. That's sort of what it seems like. You almost don't even feel it. It's slightly cool to the touch, um, but that's that slight cool is the only thing you can feel. There's no texture to it as you kind of push it away and it avoids your hands entirely. The wound is uh, not deep. Uh, you don't know if bandaging it would help or not. I'm gonna tell you that any attempt you make to heal it, given your very uh, faint uh, understanding of how this thing works, your very absent understanding of this, is going to be very difficult. I will let you try to patch it up if you would like to. I would give you disadvantage on the roll. That's fair. Um, I would, kind of seeing how slight the injury is, I would um, kind of, you know, pull my hands back and kind of shuffle backwards on my knees a little bit so I can look at this, at, at the pain rob more directly and say, it doesn't look like it's a bad injury. Would you like, I, I can't guarantee that I can fix this right now. So it's up to you. I can try to heal you right now, or we can we can wait until we get to the ship where we have a piece of you, for lack of a better word, there, and we can try to do a better job there where I have more equipment. Does that make sense? It does not respond. <laughs> yes, yes okay. or no? It does not respond. Do <laughs> simple. Do okay, you want simple to let him try me. now, or do you, or do you want to let him try now? No response. Would you rather wait until we get peace from ship? Realizing you're going to keep asking these questions, it finally does this, and it goes, does the yes, and then the no? There's, <laughs> as if there is no in-between that you gave it. <laughs> did, okay. Did I'm going to take this as a not right now. <laughs> we uh, want to heal you. It nods. It gets that. Do you want to go with us? go with us back to the ship um it shakes its head do you it want, want us to, go to grab your piece and bring it back here to help you it shakes its head are you dying it doesn't respond did you destroy that man's whole planet? It shakes its head. Did he destroy what's left of yours? Your you? Oh, oh, what's left of you? Yes. He said he was hunting them. He's a pain brown hunter. That does track. 
Do you want us to get rid of him? Yes. <laughs> I want to get I want to get Merrick's read on that answer. Merrick has been like stone faced the whole time. Um, he sort of is looking at it and looking at you, and he gives like a "Can we talk out here?" sort of a nod. Yeah, I'll I'll evaluate that whole situation and go with and like excuse myself he's, to go. He talk he's to gonna you. walk and talk with you for a minute. Um, before we do that, I'm gonna go to Ro because I've been neglecting this for a long time. Um, so Ro, you are exploring this um, burial ground, basically. Uh, what is it you're looking for? Uh, without opening anything, of course. Uh, I'm going to try to see, like, just what I can deduce out uh, from the size, shape of the sarcophagi, uh, like, anything about this people, because they're obviously extinct right now, or at least if they aren't extinct, then they exist elsewhere and they might not know that this is their origin. Sure. You know, their, their, their origin, so... Seeing if any of the, um, if there's if there's any uh, fragments, that kind of thing, I'm being very very careful, especially in the pain rust yeah. line of sight, to not like let's say, I don't <laughs> know, desecrate the desecrate dead, a yeah. tomb. <laughs> <laughs> but very very carefully making um, educated guesses and um, and you know like. Uh, gathering as much information as I can about the people here, because it's not like I'm going to be able to get the paint rod directly to tell me about the people here, right? It buried them, and they're gone, as far as we know. Um, yeah, no, I gotcha. So you all are doing some investigating. They are, again, in pretty good keep. It's um, faring fairly well. That said, you can reset up your scanner relay now. You don't have all the walls in the way. So you can do a more close... Uh, not scan, uh, survey. You can do a more close survey yeah. uh, using your tech. So you do some scans here. I'm not going to make you roll for this because you're not under the usual time or situation pressure. Um, and it's a, actually a fairly easy thing. Um, so you um, get a scan inside one of these sarcophagi without disturbing it, of course. And right. you learn that these are not any of the core races. Uh, they don't match uh, the size or shape of anyone else. They don't appear to have ever obtained space travel. Um, their uh, arms are shorter than their legs, uh, but not, not like shorter. If you by regular human portions, their arms would be a little short, uh, and their heads would be a little big, uh, and they're just kind of generally a little bit different from the average, but not extraordinarily so. They evolved in the same sort of bipedal shape that uh, many do. Um, they had uh, three fingers and a thumb instead of four, uh, and they uh, yeah, there's. Their skeletons were actually fairly, or are fairly frail, um, which you would deduce based on what you already know from this to be because the heavy lifting in the relationship was done by the pain raw, uh, and they did more of the right. minute uh, kind of finite work. Um, mm -hmm. You can take some scan, uh, take some saves and prints and what whatnot, so that if you do happen yeah. to encounter one, you can let them know. Um, but other, other yeah. than that, I don't know unless there's anything else you're looking to get from this. I don't know what else to. No, uh, uh, Ro right now is trying to be as uh, fearfully respectful as possible. Uh, cool. <laughs> uh, a, 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 a big mix of like you know respect and terror go yeah, yeah, yeah. hand in hand. Absolutely. Uh, and is basically trying to be as thorough as possible without causing a ruckus because right now, um, like his scales are tingling that there might be. Um, that, that things are a little fragile right now. Sure. So it's trying to get as much information as possible and then already starts formulating how he's going to write his thesis and stuff like that in his head. And, you know, like, he's, like, you know, practicing, like, an opening. is like, in my study spell. <laughs> <laughs> like, what, what do you think? Should I start with that? I love it. <laughs> like, I, I'm, I'm basically, like, tossing ideas, um, tossing ideas uh, over to Hugo of, as far as, like, should I start with the people and then the pain raw? I mean, they're a symbiotic group of species. And you have to catch them right away. It's, you've got to start with the pain raw because it's the most exciting thing. I can't believe that it's right here. I'm still freaking out a little bit. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, the, the fact that it did this is very important. So I, I, I agree. The, the whole debunking a myth is a good starting point. Mm -hmm. Debunking a myth. And I would like to... Assuming... 
Yeah, assuming it is debunked and not just slightly misunderstood. I would like to tra- uh, then transition this over to the conversation that yep. the Captain and Merrick are having. No worries. You guys are walking through the halls of this temple, and mm-hmm. Merrick's quiet for a second. Do you want to open the conversation? <clears throat> Do you want to open the conversation or see what he's going to say? I'm waiting for him. He's the one that wants to talk. Right. He he's walking and goes. The problem is, one of them's lying, and they're both right. Briar called this from a mile away, ten miles away. This thing wants to use us to kill him. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's justified. He was right about that, which means he's going to take precautions. And if I were alone on a planet that I was hiding from people because of my crimes and someone came to help the person who was hunting me, I'd lie to them too. I don't know which one of them's lying. One of them is. I want to believe that it's Briar, because in spite of the fact that he's taken two shots already, I'm still less afraid of him than I am of that thing. But we need to be prepared for the fact that it could be the pain raw that's using us to get what it wants done. It's a gut check. There's no way for us to know this. We can't prove it. Were you lying to me? What? When we first met, when you were stuck and you were lost, and I came and found you, did you lie to me? Knew it would be better if I told the truth. The truth was on my side in that case. But I can tell you, not knowing you, if the tables had been turned and the truth would not have served me well, I would have. I wouldn't now, but I would have. What do you think we should do? You know, it's times like this I'm glad you're the captain, because I don't know. (laughs) (sighs) The way I see it, you, you gotta do one of those things where it's like, if this, then that. If Briar's the one lying, killing him makes sense. Or, yeah, no, killing him. If he's lying about this and he's just doing this to hunt this thing for whatever reason, Screw him. If the pain raw's the one lying, I don't think we, I don't know if we can kill it. There's eight of us, nine of us, eight of us. Uh, Hugo's not gonna fight. Um, it's wounded. I mean, it can't kill one guy with a gun, no matter how big got that gun is. We could probably take it. And then Briar would let us go. The fact of the matter is, we've got numbers on our side, and right now is the only chance we have to fight the pain rock. Because if we leave this temple, we're done. That's the, the only shot we had at taking it out is gone. I'm not saying we should. I don't know if we should. I don't know what it's capable of. But I don't like... I don't like that everyone's treating it like a dog. It's a... I was raised on stories of how bad this thing could kill you. So was I. I know. And it hasn't killed us. And as far as I'm concerned, that guy's tried to kill us twice. You're not wrong about that. They're both scared. He's- They're both monsters. But so are we to one of them. So, since uh, we've been in situations where we had to deal with monsters we didn't like and monsters we did before, I guess it comes down to which monster do you like more? You know I've been a sucker for dogs. Oh my god, it's not a dog. It's a... Never mind. <sighs> Merrick, I, I... You've always been my number one because you always bring something to the table that I'm missing. Thank you for giving me a reality check, but at the same time, none of us are good people. <laughs> or good creatures and and I think we're all scared even that asshole's scared too 
That's why he's shooting at us. But I I think that if the pain raw was gonna kill us, like all of the bedtime stories said, we would all be dead by now. And it hasn't. And it's hurt. And honestly, if they are true, then we need to make sure that Hal is gonna be okay. Because Hal's the only one that's touched it so far. Cap, if I'm on your side. If you want to go through with this, I'll, you know I will. Do you really want two space terrors able to find us anywhere we go? That one's different. Well, because it's not nice. This could turn not nice at any time. Just making sure you consider all the options. And he's going to start walking back. Uh, yes, uh, Ethan. I know I didn't call it, but can I say I stealthed away to go listen in on this? Absolutely, yes. You you can you <laughs> could have heard every word of that. Um, so uh, since it sounds like the plan is going to be to uh, side with this thing, uh, I think what we're going to do now is we're going to take a quick ten. Uh, we're going to take our little our little midway intermission. So if you guys want to keep planning, you're welcome to. Uh, to say, just cut back on some of the. I know you. I know y'all love your plans. Uh, to cut back on some of that when we come back, you're welcome to. But uh, I'm gonna take. We're gonna take quick ten. Everyone, do what you need to do. Uh, my lovely, lovely viewers. Uh, we will see you again very soon. And uh, yeah, don't go anywhere. We'll be back. I will be right back. Ooh. Same here. I need to. Pee.
And we are in. All right, we're back. We did it. Uh, all right, so we did it. where we left our crew, they were uh, coming back together from their respective little uh, temple talks and investigations and what have you uh, to discuss what happens next. Uh, so uh, I'm going to get the music going again. Uh, and uh, let's dive right in. Uh, Merrick and the captain return to the room. Uh, Merrick looking a bit more at ease than when he left. Um, and Ro and Hugo, you finished all everything the scanner can tell you without actively opening a sarcophagus, you have learned. Um, the pain raw has not done much in the way of movement. It seems uh, cont- content to stay there right now. Uh, so f- it stays. Uh, I would just I... want to do Sorry, go ahead. No, no, you started before me. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, fine. Um, I just wanted to ask, I just wanted to ask them it a quick question sure just like go ahead curiosity so. yeah so uh do it's gonna walk up and like pop a squat next to hal they look very much like their siblings <laughs> the, ha- the house not, in fact, <laughs> the house how squared um, oh, house how squared <laughs> oh my god um, and he's going to ask it it then eh Where, do you want us to take the beacon somewhere um, it shakes its head. But you want us to have it. It shakes its head. It doesn't care about the beacon anymore. Nods. It found its way. It's, it's found its There's way no home. more to be called home. Nods. I, the captain isn't back yet, and I might be speaking out of line, but... I'm sure you could call us home. Uh, it doesn't respond to that. Um, we uh, the, we'll hang on to the beacon. I said, come on, we can't just take this thing with us. Can, can we? The captain has returned. Where would by it the sleep? Way. What would it eat? <laughs> Our nightmares, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Ends up and walks, walks back a few feet. All right. What do you? So what do you, uh, The floor is yours. What do you guys do? You have a, a plan to discuss. Do you? I'm. I want to talk to the pain rod. Sure. Do you want to? Do you want to stay here without any of us being here anymore? Um. It doesn't respond. We can't stay. The, Obviously. The beacon calls it, or at least it can find its way to the beacon. Meaning that right. wherever we take the beacon, it can find its way to there. But would it be able to find its way back home after that? That's a question. My personal feeling is at this point... We need to leave the beacon here? I don't know why. Can we break the beacon? And it, like, break it in half and it still work? It does not respond. (laughs) Probably not. I'm more curious. Does beacon give off signal that we can identify? In time. Detect? Uh, it, it would take some some doing, but uh, with the studies they did on it last time, I believe the answer to that would be yes. If you made built a device to track it, yes. Uh, what we got last time is it puts off a low grade, uh, fairly harmless radiation, and the advan- What it does though is that radiation is able to be detected from a significantly long distance uh, to the tune of several planets away. So if we can replicate that. Yeah, there's no reason you couldn't. Except that our ship is, you know. It's all. Is there, are, are there any natural resources for fuel? I'm going to ask that the pain raw. Hopefully it sounds a little like. Uh, is, is, is it going to know? Does it even know what fuel is? It, it, it nods. Okay, great. 
Um, yeah, Merrick's going to say, I'm with the captain. Let's think a little more short term right now. We need to make sure we get out of, off this planet in one piece, which means we need to pick an enemy and fight it. And I'm only saying this out loud in the room right now because, looks at the captain, I think we did. It's very simple and very complicated at the same time. One of enemies is last of their kind. So killing it would be genocide, which I don't think any of us want. Nope. And Briar is human, yes? Yep. Not genocide, then. Yeah, no worries. Humans are like cockroaches. Aren't, aren't we just? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, Wait, is Merrick did... human? I didn't know Merrick. Merrick is human. He's the only human on the crew. I would not have said that. No, I... <laughs> I don't know. You might have a rapport. Uh, really? You, you might have a rapport, and I'm kind of okay with it. He's kind of okay with it. Okay. I'm, I'm also half human, so... <laughs> so, before we, before we go in guns blazing, maybe we can... Tr well, I say we... Maybe we can try talking this human into giving up on his quest and you know just there's a whole other universe out there that that doesn't involve hunting mythological creatures that are the last of its kind i mean i don't even know from, how you would hang a head on like that on the wall it would just slide off <laughs> from what dewitt was saying it sounds like he doesn't care about any of that he he's on a revenge mission to kill this thing and if we go there and say it's fine it's safe he's not gonna hurt you he's not gonna believe us and he might kill he us believes, at least from what he said he believes our new friend killed his whole planet yes but... i find i found this hard to believe even from start i how does one given... kill whole planet Here's the thing. I don't actually think that's terribly far-fetched, given what Roe translated from the pictographs. That they... all Because all we can gather from that is they went out into the greater universe and brought back supplies. Resources. Yes? So, yeah. Supplies, resources, building materials, etc., etc., what we don't know is how they got them. So and they what could they have consider supplies. Exactly. So they could have razed entire countries to get what they needed, which kind of leads me in a roundabout way to my next question. And Hal is going to turn around and squat down next to the panel. Which, off. by the way, is several inches closer to you. So you turn around and it's like all up in your business. <laughs> you were there was a lot of talk about it killing, uh, and it sort of just is very present to you Just, right now. Um, how did you... Um, yes or no questions. <laughs> I think it can understand beyond yes or no questions. It can understand just, whether it can respond is a different question. Let me ask this. Painra, how did you communicate with the people that used to live here? Um, the people who were not you, the people who were closer to us, the small ones. It, uh, gets back to its weird appendages, uh, and makes its way past you to the center pictogram and sort of puts its head down to point at that. As it does, uh, there's a slightly jarring, uh, shift, a movement that you see it make, you haven't actually seen it do before where the front part of it that would be like the nose area folds out into four separate sections it opens uh revealing beneath it um a set of what appear to be these sort of like amorphous uh like bone white fangs which uh, and sort of reveal themselves in an x pattern and it sets each one down respectively uh onto the stone and draws a very slight line and folds back up. That explains so axes. That does explain the axes on the trees and 
So you communicated with each other while you communicated to the people through the carvings. None. Okay. That's a lot more complex of a solution than I was hoping for. You were hoping for like Psychic Link or something, weren't you? Or something like that, I guess. Um, I mean, of all the people, Amalia, <clears throat> Amalius would know there are ways to project one's thoughts into uh, audio. It's not easy, but it's not impossible. Yeah. True. That is actually a good point. Um, this thing is clearly capable. Can I try something dumb? Permission, Captain? Uh, yes, but as to what? Go ahead. <laughs> um, he's gonna. Is it? There's a. Is there a way to detach his Nero mask? Yeah. He detaches it. Sure. Um, and it's gonna make him a little uncomfortable because he's not used to having it off like nearly as mm -hmm. much. Um, so he's gonna walk over to the pay rub and he's going to point to it, like the neuro mask and then point to the pay rub and then he's gonna hold it out. And Halcyon is going to kind of with one hand sign like smart to <laughs> Hal and <Thumbs> also <laughs> say uh, to the pain rub, uh, this is how we communicate. We don't have a mouth. Maybe this will work for you? Uh, it looks at it, uh, and you can see it sort of um, folds its, like, uh, weird fur stuff out to try and, like, fit around it a little bit, and the mask sort of, you let it go as it sort of kind of hovers there, and it sort of... Very much, like, kind of, like... Uh, and you hear, like at first, like, static, like, and, like, garbled, uh, and then just some various other, like, sounds, uh, and you hear the system beginning to strain. Whatever thoughts are going through the pain rod's head are, uh, it's a different, these are wired for specific brains anyway. It know, it, like, it knows enough to be able to think, but it, it, you would need the technology, like, you would need to build something specifically for it, and even then you would need to get a close look at its brain, which... You don't know how that's going to fly. Dude, it's going to be like, okay. Give, 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 it give, returns give, it. <laughs> okay. Uh, I was just about to say, could I try to work on the neural mask? Uh, oh, you mean like right now? Yeah, right now. Uh, dude, what's going to sign how long? Uh, how long do you think that would take? How long? I'm not sure. I'm... It's new species, so not entirely sure how brainwaves work. Time out, but... Merrick says. Can I ask what we're doing? Is this... Like, there is still a guy out there with a gun, and our ship is a long way away. Is this important now? Merrick's right. Merrick's right. We can shelve this. And also, any changes <clears throat> that you might make, Talon, might mess up the neural mask. Anyway. Fair. I'm not saying you're a bad engineer. I'm just saying it's a possibility. I'm, and I'm sure. Listen, if we're on Team Space Dog, I'm all for talking to Team Space Dog, but we should probably prioritize. I hate dogs. Not Team it's Space not, Dog. I don't know what to tell you, man. It's not a dog. She started it. Um, points at the captain. <laughs> <laughs> what? You started it. Oh, okay. Okay. Merrick's right. It is a dog. We have. <laughs> Merrick. Sorry. We do have a bigger issue on hand, but uh, the important takeaways are it does have a way of communicating that is not head nods, yes or no, which is good. And um, Ro can vaguely translate the pictograms, or at least get a gist of it, which is important. Mm. Um, so, how are we going to kill Briar? We have to kill him. Or incapacitate. Or whatever. He can't stay. Neither can we. 
So whether we take him as a ward of our ship temporarily or make it so that he's no longer here. He can't be here. I mean, if we disable gun, Painrock can probably do rest. Painrock nods. I mean, right, in terms well, of we can trick, trick him and roll him into a, a sense of comfort and then kill him very unethically. We just, we can just say we made him, or we can flat out lie and tell him we killed it, and then bring him onto the ship, and then drop him off somewhere. I don't think he will believe that we killed it. That is very true, but it is an option. He would want... Proof. Gammon! Yeah! Do you have, like, explosives on ship? Not as many as I'd like. How many is not as many as you like? I mean, like, I have... Uh, sorry, you said on ship. Uh, it goes down to belt. I have these two, like, stun grenade kind of things. Small stuff. Uh, and I can whip up an explosive charge. I find that if you shoot things enough, they tend to explode anyway. So, like, I could just put together some, like, volatile things. I was simply... I was simply thinking we use flyer to fly over his ship and just drop bombs. Uh, Merrick says, sorry, go ahead, Rob. Oh, I just say, is, didn't he try to shoot at us last time? Wouldn't he shoot he, down the flyer? He's been he's been trying to shoot at Pain Ra this whole time. I don't know, that last shot didn't seem to be anywhere near the Pain Ra. I mean, on one hand, Merrick says, the Pain Ra was leading us here. It was probably near us without us knowing it the whole time. On the other hand, I think Vo's right. Uh, Rose, Rose, right. Sorry. Um, if he sees a flyer coming at him, he's gonna blast it. If we are against just flat out murdering somebody, we can try to talk to him via comms before we make any decisions. But if we let him go with his gun, or if we take him away from this place and lie to him and say that the pain raw is dead he's going to come back and will the pain raw ever really be safe as long as he's out there probably not i would say definitely not i'm not saying we have to go out there and straight up kill a guy however i am saying that if we can't resolve this diplomatically i'm not seeing how else we can leave without taking without one party being taken out and I'm hoping it's not us and I hope it's not that and I don't think that Briar is the diplomatic type I have an Do idea uh, you first tell on I was going to ask uh, in your converse, initial conversation with him did Briar say that it was just this particular pain raw, or has he hunted multiples? He's hunted multiples. Time out. This is the last one. He, ne right? he never said that. He did say he believed it to be the last one, but he and he said he was a pain raw hunter. He never explicitly said he's hunted any more than just this one. <laughs> oh, it was a flex. He never said he's hunted just this one. He's saying that he was a pain raw hunter. I don't know his body count. I was going to offer idea that uh, he tried to commit genocide to alleviate everyone's conscience of straight murdering him. <laughs> I have an idea, Captain, if you would like to go about this diplomatically. Um, and Hal, Hal is going to give kind of an uneasy, like, grimace glance at the pain Ra <laughs> and say... We do have the bit of pain raw flesh in the medic, at the medic station. If we bring that to him and say we killed the pain raw, which we're not doing, but we tell him that we did and offer that as proof, he might believe us. 
Did you understand that? Uh, it nods. That's not a bad idea. <laughs> it might mean, though, that your bit of flesh is not going to be returned to you. It, Hal says, looking at the pain. No response. But if we get to the ship and get off the sh this uh, planet, I might be able to heal you without that. It, nods. it just might take some time. And if you're okay with that, then I think that might be our best bet. It nods. For everyone. So we have the consent of the pain raw, but do we have the consent of the crew? I'm for it. I think it's a great idea. I think that as the last of its kind and the only link to a forgotten civilization, it's our imperative to preserve it. And I think, and Hal is going to, when you say that, Ro, Hal is going to uh, look, turn to the pain raw and say out loud to everybody, but specifically to the pain raw. And if that's, and if you're leaving this planet, I think we should leave the beacon here so it can find its way back home again and join its people. It nods. Okay. Does it Hold have on. reason to leave? Well, if it's coming with us in order to get healed. Oh, true. I don't care how we take care of Briar as long as we take care of Briar. So... Do it. <laughs> what do you think? Yes. Um... <clears throat> Um, just don't let me do the talking. <laughs> I, 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 this is all messy. I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> well, hopefully we won't be here for very much longer. Okay. I just like how DeWitt's uh, neural mask went um a couple times there. <laughs> He's thinking. He's got a lot on his mind. <laughs> uh, Gavin's gonna be. Gavin's gonna speak up and say. So I'm for this plan. Just real quick, remind me: is diplomacy the one with the guns or without the guns? It's the ones without the guns at first. Got it. Guns are back up. Loud plan, and clear. Merrick. Uh, Merrick goes. Followed you this far. I'm here for it. Let's do it. Hugo? Uh, he, oh, sorry, Hugo. I thought he was getting the characters confused. <laughs> um, Hugo, Hugo's going to be like, um, I typically stick to just, like, you know, helping uh, row with things and uh, generally doing studies and whatnot. Uh, how you handle the messy business is uh, truly not my business. I have no desire to have any say in the matter. And is that how you feel too, Vexia? <laughs> um, Vexia says, uh, mm -hmm. Is Vexia in here with us? Yeah, Vexia's, Vexia's <laughs> in the fire, in the yeah. Um, Vexia's gonna say, uh, on the contrary, I actually do have some input on it, and that input is, I like the version of this where we don't need to go in guns blazing, and I like the version of this where I don't need to, where I'm not in a fire that's flying close to this thing. So as long as... Uh, as long as I'm not actively on any sort of strike team, I'm fine if you want to take a tactical approach or a diplomatic approach. Excellent. Okay. All right. Let's go get that that pain raw part. Okay. You guys uh, can head back towards the outside of the temple. The pain raw um, will follow you, but only to the edge of the temple. As you get towards the end, it slows down and stops. Um. Um, That's probably for the best. At this point in time, I feel it is imperative to mention how long it has been since you've slept. Uh, you land on this planet after uh, a half day of flying through space as is. Then you spent the rest of the day uh, working on space stuff, and then another four hours of the night walking through. If you were to equate this to Earth time, it would be approximately two in the morning, and you have about a three-hour hike back to the ship. 
what this means is you guys can power through on adrenaline for now. When you get back to the ship, if you don't have a chance to rest and sleep, I'm going to give you the equivalent of negative one ongoing, which is just disadvantage on rolls, uh, until you guys get a chance to rest and recover, because you're, you're running on fumes right now. You have the advantage in that you have the numbers and a good plan, but the rolls you make are going to be at disadvantage just because tense situations, especially ones regarding, um, I would say, uh, physical stats. Uh, I would say influence probably isn't going to change. You can talk while you're tired. Um, but when you're worried about I th anything other than influence, we'll have disadvantage until you guys get some sleep. Okay? Okay. That's fair. All right. You guys get to the egg. Can <clears throat> I call Vexius down so I can get in the flyer? Uh, yeah, on my way. Uh, and Vexius is going to zoom down to you. Uh, you can hop in. Enjoy walk back. I will curl up in the chair and take a <laughs> <laughs> cat thing to do. Oh, Talon's gonna be God. fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Talon's taking a little cat nap. Um, I'm literally not surprised. Alright, um, so do you, are you taking any precautions as you go like, specifically in the clearing where you were shot at last time? How's your plan uh, getting back to the tree line especially? I think we should stop at the entrance and give a listen and see if we can hear that telltale hum. Mm, and no, maybe that's only go... When, it's only when he starts actually firing it that it, it, it charges up. We don't hear it all the time. Well, same answer, Merrick says. One of us who's fast enough, we, do we all dodged last time, but if one of us who's fast enough goes out there as bait, we can at least see if he's going to shoot us or not. Um, I mean, I'm pretty quick on my feet. I'll do it. I was going to volunteer, but if someone else is going to, Merrick steps backwards. <laughs> Very bitterly, just like a quick flick of the wrist, like his hands are down, but he's going to flick sign. He's, he's going to say, He's gonna say fucker. <laughs> a very rude, some very rude sign uh, in Malia's uh, sign language. All right, um, you uh, head out. Uh, Merrick watches. Goes. I keep seeing that one. I gotta figure out what that means. Um, <laughs> Tell you when you're. Right. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, you make your way out. Um, you uh, kind of start walking. You. Where, where are you going to uh, test this theory? Um, I am going to... Hmm. So it's like probably like trees and then the clearing? Uh, it's clearing the trees. trees. You are at the temple clearing, clearing the trees. trees. Got it. So you can still see the <clears throat> smoldering wreckage of the ones he took down with the first shot. So I'm going to try to go to the perimeter, like not into the tree line, but like at just before the tree line, if there's like that perimeter, that open area. And I'm gonna um gonna see if this helps at all. I'm gonna unsheath the star sword so that there's a source of light. Oh, uh, so you're explicitly gonna... drawing the attention, gotcha. Yeah. Uh cool, cool, cool. Um And I'm gonna turn on my comms. Okay, you flick your comms on, you step out. Uh, nothing happens. You seem, the coast seems to be clear. Can you, um, roll assessment with in intelligence? Assessment intelligence, please. Uh, I'm not... Are you changing? No, go ahead. Nine. Nine? Okay. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of insight into the situation, uh, which is basically going to give you like a, a list of the reason he's not firing could be one of three things if you're assuming he's uh, the bad guy here. It is either he's waiting for all of you, he's tracking, he's looking to see if the pain raw is going to show himself and keeping his priorities straight on that, um, or he assumes that he missed last time, so he's going to miss this time. So he's waiting for a better spot. If if he is going to fire, it's one of those three things that's stopping him from doing so now. 
Or he's asleep. Or he's asleep, because some people do need sleep. Yes. Um, but... Uh, so Maybe I'm going to oh, have, have the comms on, but I'm going to be like to like the rest of the group. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just clip in while trying to keep an ear out still. So there might be three, four scenarios, right? He's waiting to see if the pin room will show up, take a shot. Either that, or it's probably the pin room, but he knows he's going to miss, probably, maybe. We don't know for certain. He might be asleep, or he's waiting for the rest of us to come out, if he can even tell. Um... At this point, Hal's gonna. The other Hal is going to hop on Com and say, Well, if we all kind of know the way back, we can stay spread out. Still within visual range of the person in front of us, but spread out so if he decides to shoot, he's not going to get all of us. That's actually. A pretty solid plan, considering that if he's looking for the pit rod to shoot, if there's multiple reads, he doesn't know who it is. If he's got a moral conscience of not murdering someone in cold blood, then that'd be a good option. Okay. I think if, if that's the case, we have to remain spread out. So if we do hear the hum of his weapon getting ready to fire, we all drop and make ourselves as flat as we can. We can't have somebody coming into somebody else's area and making a bigger target. And I think that the fact that we already have two of our crewmates whose instinct is to duck and cover, we should all duck and cover. Agreed. Yes, ma'am. Get low to the ground. Okay. Be like Hugo. <laughs> okay. First time for everything. Stay low and fast. Okay, you guys, you? you guys make your way low and fast through the forest uh, as tactically as you can, as carefully as you can, back to the ship. Uh, back to our ship. Yes, yes. adrenaline fuels you. Uh, yeah, what's up? I, actually, I'm, I'm going to uh, kind of while we're while we're moving, kind of uh, um, mention to um, uh, uh, to uh, Halcyon. Um, Halcyon, how well stocked is the ship medically? We're all running on empty right now, and far be it for me to suggest less healthy alternatives. Do you think that we could uh, brew up something chemical? If we can get power to the med bay, I can synthesize something for all of us or at least some of us, depending on how long the power holds. Uh, my medical profession, my, my professional medical opinion is that sleep is going to be better for us. Understood, understood. Um, and there's the whole power situation that we are lacking on. Yeah, yeah. Just thinking back to my days, uh, which we, there was, there was a small, uh, there was a small fridge in the uh, uh, in the uh, academy <laughs> that uh, when you really really needed that boost, uh... for sure. I can when we get back there. I can I can check in the fridge and, and I, I can check around and see if there's anything. But I I can't think of think of anything offhand right now. Right, right. Understood. Understood. Uh, okay. Do do remember you also do have a uh, cargo hold full of medical supplies right now because you were transporting them. Mm, I thought they got. Isn't that like not ours destroyed. though? Oh, it's it partially destroyed, and it's not yours, but you do have them. I, I don't know if you're still. <laughs> not, I don't know if you still plan on finishing that delivery. Uh, you're definitely going to be late. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and there is some missing from the damage. I think you lost one of your four crates. Yep. Um, but you you can. Uh, anyway, you are making your way back. Staying low and fast, uh, planning for what will happen when you get back, when you get back. Uh, and it isn't until um, you get back close to, closer to the ship 
that you finally get any sort of change, um, which is static at first, but as the static sort of clears up as you get back into any sort of comm range, um, you hear uh, a robotic voice coming over comms. Come in, check, yes. Uh, Briar would like to speak. Please respond when you receive this. Come in, check, yes. And that message repeats. Uh, it's the voice as uh, oh as Halifax God. knows of Telemachus, the robot. It's so Telemachus. Funny. It's it's the ship's that you have robot thing. Well, I mean, let's I guess hear what he has to say. I mean, right now. Should we rest for try to get our gather our bearings first? before we let him know we're within comms range. I think that's wise. Uh, as oh, as if on cue as you're saying that, we know you're within comms range. We have motion sensors. They didn't hear you say that. Can we but have? They didn't hear you say that, but that's okay. just an assumption of just like, the, the message goes back to repeating. If I can, if I have like in within I don't know how close I am to the next person but if I'm close to Merrick I'd like to shoot him a real telling look that's like I fucking told you so that we are now the ones being hunted <laughs> that guy is like I'm just really annoyed with this person I don't <laughs> really like strange people and I especially don't like this if guy. I thought he was definitely the good guy I would not have we would not have been having that conversation it's because I didn't know <laughs> Um, okay, are you guys just going to keep moving silently? We can leave him a message saying that he can talk in the morning if he wants to. Yeah, I was about to say, if we don't say anything, he's going to get more suspicious. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hal's right. Okay, I'm going to turn my comms on. <laughs> comms the fire captain. up. Uh, in the middle of the uh, Hello, check, yes. yes. Please respond if you are in comms. Yes, yes, yes. Oh my god. Oh, oh this is Captain it's you. York. <laughs> Please hold. Uh, the comms go dead for a second. I'm putting my comms down really quick and I'm going to look at everybody and say, You really put me on. Back on. Uh, and then you're going to hear, <clears throat> uh, Sorry, wrong voice. Where is the thing? <sighs> hey, sorry. Catching a little cat nap. Uh, you guys alive, huh? Yes. What do you want? Uh, well, I was just trying to figure out how to proceed next. But you're alive, which is, you know, good. And also confusing. Because it does lead me to believe that some sort of unspoken deal was struck with this monster. And now I'm the bad guy here. What makes you say that? Because if... That is a wildly outlandish suspicion. Then and I'm 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 making sure you understand what the word suspicion means then, because I'm using it here. By all means, tell me what actually happened because I've been racking my brain about what could have happened if it wasn't your guys' grisly deaths and I'm coming up empty. Where do you have motion sensors at? Just curious. I Listen, Telemachus is a genius with power. I've been amping up the ship sensors. Uh, I'm putting it all into that. It's excellent, excellent, excellent. Well, here's the thing: we've got to get back to ours for a minute. So, if you don't mind, we're gonna table this conversation. Whoa, 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 so whoa, whoa, I can whoa, take whoa, care whoa. of my crew, and then we'll come back and talk to you. I will shoot your ship. We're talking. Here's the thing: because if I'm right, and it's really easy to just say I'm not which you haven't done yet, which is not filling me with a lot of confidence. But if I'm right, then that time you need at your ship is to engineer my downfall, and I'm not having it. So we are going to talk, or I'm going to destroy your ship. You know I can do it. Please hold. <laughs> <laughs> Got him! <laughs> That's why you're the captain. Everyone, uh, everyone else could have heard that. Again, you can have your like audi auditory comms on. You all heard. Oh, yeah. I don't. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. definitely did. Oh yeah, I expected them all to. Have yeah. heard that. I did not go in there alone. Everyone's. Listening. I spoke. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um. 
Are we all kind of close to each other? Are we still spread out? You're spread out, but you're, think... you've are you learned, like, you can talk. You know it's it safe doesn't... now. The only danger is Briar, and yeah. he can't hear you when you, like, shout. So Exactly, exactly. No. So, and it really honestly doesn't matter. He knows where we are. So I'm going to kind of, like, rally everybody. Okay, bring everyone back together. You're cl- getting close to the ship now anyway, but... Yep. Uh, yeah. Us being in the ship is a two-for-one for him. You said yourself, it takes him a while to recharge his gun after he fires it. It's not a, a rapid fire um, piece of hardware. If he aims at the ship and we're not on it, then he runs the risk of not being able to defend himself. If he aims at us, then he's not going to be aiming at the ship. We don't have the luxury of sleep. We don't have the luxury of dealing with this tomorrow morning. Agreed. We don't even have a coffee maker. I say... <laughs> Do you think that there are motion sensors above the tree line? Like, scanning? Probably that's what he's using. The motion sensors are all at his ship, just scanning the whole place. Yeah, he's probably just... uh, uh... We need the piece. We need the part that is on the ship to bring to Briar. As cute as this hold is, you have 15 seconds to respond or I am going to destroy your ship. I'm turning yeah, I'm turning on the comms and I'm saying we're on our way, just shut up for a second. Thank you. And I'm turning it back okay. off. Literally. No, I he's, fucking he's, hate him. he's not going to accept he's not going to accept uh that we killed it. And now he we're, stick we're, with the plan. Merrick's gonna say, uh uh-uh. uh, now the captain said we are on the way. If we aren't, he's gonna know. He's got sensors, yep. he knows where we're going. Yep. Either we're locked in or he calls our bluff right now. I tell him that, I, Captain, I would say, tell him that you are escorting us back to the ship. And then once, it, as soon as that happens, you will head back. Just tell him we fought him. it. Some of us are hurt and you're That's what bringing I was us back. Thinking. The doctor's yeah, and staying. Show, and and give, the, give him proof but that. But tell him you're not sure if it was it or not. Tell him you're not sure if it's it or not because it was super easy to kill. <laughs> <laughs> and that should give us enough time. I know exactly where the the flesh is. I hate saying it that way, but I I know exactly where the, the the bit of pain raw is, and I quickly give it to you, and you can be on your way. Um. Actually, that's a good. I was gonna out. Of, I was gonna say that. Okay, no, actually, no. This is me now. Um, either that or you... I leave you there, and I go on my way now with um, Merrick and uh, Halifax and leave you with the others, and then you come back with the flyer with the piece. Couldn't help but notice a distinct lack of you guys being on your way. You're going to have to explain that because this is looking more and more suspicious as the night goes on. Fuck off. <laughs> Fuck off. I'm turning the comms on, <laughs> and I'm saying, we have injuries, I'm trying to s- disseminate our team so that we can get to you and not die on the way. Is that okay? Barely. You're on thin ice. Oh, Jesus Christ. And I'm gonna look uh, cursing him out as I'm turning it off. The guy fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll split up here. I will take a very naively roundabout way because I don't know where he is, but I can find the general idea. Um, That way that gives you a little bit more time. Yes, I don't, I think if we're splitting up now, I think we're going to have to forego the flesh because he'll be able to tell that one of us went to the ship and then back to you. Yeah, I think that would be too suspicious. Point. That's a good point. On top nope. Of... You're right. That's, that's that's true. Okay. We're going to drop off some people who need to be seen by you at the ship, and then we will no. be on our way. Okay. At this point, I would like you, uh, Farah, to go ahead. You're the one who's been doing the talking. Can you uh, do a face adversity with influence, please? You do not have disadvantage because it is speaking, and you aren't. Uh, that is doesn't, it's not a drawback for you. But uh, it's time to convince this guy you mean business. Oh my god. 
a seven. Se- <laughs> Thank you. Okay, seven's a mix. That was very close. <sighs> yeah, no, it's fine. I just didn't want it to be a six. Okay. Um, so, with a seven, that is a mixed success. You don't really have much say in how this has uh, gone down so far, but you think you did a believable job of doing this. What I'm going to say is what he said sticks. You're on thin ice. If there are any cracks in your story, it's it's going to break it. Uh, he will be on the lookout. He's expecting something to go wrong at this point. Uh, and right now, he does believe you. And if you slip, if, if anything doesn't line up, if anything fails to make sense, it's gone and he's gonna, he may fully open and fire on you. Okay. That's where we stand. Noted. All right. Um, Big game in. Yeah. Hmm? What? Captain, you should take Ammon with you. Uh, I actually kind of planned on it. I, I'm going to turn the, the comms back on. And I'm going to say, are you there, Briar? Still here. You're still not. Excellent. Well, we hope to remedy that very soon. I'm going to take my crew back to our ship, where I will dispatch the doctor to aid those who have been hurt. I will be coming with the rest of us able-bodied people to meet you and discuss what has transpired. And Which I would like to point out was not made easier by the scene earlier where you shot at us twice. I'll give you that. That was brash, though the first shot was the pain rot. I will grant you this. But you have to answer me one question, yes or no, right now. Because I think I know what you're going to say. Is the pain raw dead? Do, out of character, do I have even a split second to get a nonverbal cue from the crew before I answer? All right, so that's what I'm going to get before I answer him. I'm going to put a flyer so I can't give you one. Yeah. yeah. Al is nodding. It, it's an uneasy yes, but it's a... Yes. Okay. Ro is so not good at lying. He's, he's so... Shrug, I, like, the I guess. <laughs> you have my word that the pain raw is dead. See you soon. Okay. I'm turning comms off. <laughs> you are. Uh... Yep. I still say we should have lied and said we're, we killed something. I'm not sure if it's the pain or not. <laughs> you make your way back to the ship. Still alive. Uh, yep. You once at the ship. Are you getting the bit of pain you have? Mm-hmm. Yeah, since he's letting us uh, all go back to the ship, yeah. Okay. You grab that. Uh, you have, I don't want to say a lot of time, but you have a couple minutes if you want to quickly... What do you want to do to before you head off to Briar? Um, while I'm in the med bay, can I do a quick scan to see if I have some sort of like stimulant or anti sleep thing? I see no reason why you wouldn't at least have shots of adrenaline. I think that's pretty par for the course. Okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> I have three. Um, and I'm just going to come out one hand this rubbermaid container with um the pain rod i love that rubbermaid is still a brand (laughs) (laughs) rubbermaid is the term (laughs) rubbermaid is one of the factions still the originals (laughs) (laughs) it's got like that orange ring around it from spaghetti being microwaved oh man (laughs) that never gets so, rinse it before they put it through the dishwasher. Come uh, on! My roommate, every time, without fail. Um, pain raw in one hand in the container, and uh, three, um, you know, shot things of adrenaline. Sure. And I'm like, and I hand them both to the captain, and I say, this is to wake you up if you need it. Uh, it won't last forever, so maybe use it right before you go speak to him. And 
do not cover this. It will freak the fuck out if you try and enclose it. Leave the top open. Good luck. We're all counting on you. Oh, All right. So who's going? How? Captain told me to come. Halifax, Farah. I need Halifax because I need to know where to go. Mm-hmm. Because I need one of them, I don't need Talon, which might actually benefit us because Talon can start to work on the ship in any way possible. Okay. okay. Unless if Talon... This is all, like, you can all do what you'd like <laughs> because... <laughs> I mean, Farrah's, I was gonna, but... Yeah, Farrah's, <laughs> like, a captain as, like, as as so much as a comrade, and nothing beyond that. There's no authority beyond just, like, that when the mean voice comes out, then you should listen. <laughs> All right. But anyway, so Halifax... Halifax, definitely, because, also because Halifax is, like, kind of, like, my number three when it comes to that sort of stuff. Gee, um, <laughs> so Halifax or like number two I guess Halifax, Farrah, and Gammon are definitely going is anyone else going? you said Merrick was gonna go? I actually want Gammon back Gammon stays on the ship this... I, I want Merrick there I think it would help to have a human and I think it would help the people who are staying to have protection okay um, did I get my catnap on the flyer on the way here? you did, you're fine <laughs> alright that worked. I fear that I would not be of any use. All right. So, uh, Halcyon, uh, Ro. I actually don't know about that. Let me let me pitch it to you as like an angle that you may be of use, and you decide whether you would be more suited with your lab without or, sleep. Yeah, with your lab, but with sleep or with us. Um, it would help craft some believability into our story if you were there to tell it, like, be a weaver of sorts, because we found a lot of things. If we can distract him with the pretty aesthetics of the things, maybe he would overlook the potential holes in our story. He is a human, and no offense, because I am also half human. We do tend to believe we're pretty gullible. We believe stories. We certainly do. That's why we're here. <laughs> so, um, and Ro will also... take yeah, Ro will take the beacon and just and just say this might actually be the thing that will at least get his attention. It's a physical representation of something that he's not familiar with, or at least we assume he's not familiar with. Just don't so, call it an egg. No, it's not an egg. No, no, it, this is, this is, this is a... how you went to go explore ruins and then this is the a tracking crazy device. beastie comes. This is the tracking device that we used to find the pain rock. Completely truthful. Also omits a whole bunch of stuff, but completely truthful. <laughs> it is the <laughs> tracking device that allowed us to come into contact with it in the first okay. place. Okay. So, all right, I will I will carry that that beacon. Then. Ro is going, uh, Captain's going, Halifax is going, Halcyon and uh, Talon are staying behind. Gammon is staying behind. Merrick is coming. Merrick is coming. And Hugo. We need a human. Hugo and Vexius, of course, are staying behind. Okay. Yes. So, let's start with the captain and and company. <laughs> Uh, you guys can't tell, but I just changed the music. It's very intense. It's getting really like mm. <laughs> this track's called "Building Tension." Yeah, what's up, Talon? Uh, after they leave, Talon disappears and follows. Fantastic. <laughs> stealth, 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 stealth. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, so that leaves just to be clear: Halcyon, uh, Gammon, and uh, Hugo and Vexius on the ship. Roger. Okay. Yes. So let's start with the uh, captain and company. Uh, Halcyon, I'll be with you shortly. Okay. You guys make your way through the trees, navigating your way. You have have what you have. You're coming out of this. This one's a little, this track's a little hot. Hang on, I'm just gonna turn. Ooh. There we go. Uh, you're making your way through the trees. Uh, you're getting tired. Uh, it's now about the equivalent of six in the morning. Some of you are struggling to keep your eyes open at this point. Um, 
There are three adrenaline shots between you. If you take one, you will be okay for this scene, and whatever happens next, you're going to be out. Like, done. Is anyone taking adrenaline? <clears throat> no. Okay. I think that it should be reserved for... Roger that. In the case right of... Before. of uh, last resort. Roger that. Um, <laughs> physical confrontation. Okay. So, you know, make sure that uh, Merrick has one. You guys... Not, not take, yeah. Don't take it, it but make sure that he has dealing. one. You guys come into the clearing. Uh, Briar... Oh, you're, they're in the clearing now. Uh, hmm? Are you sure you guys don't want to take it? I thought this was uh, another scene on the way. No. Uh, do you want to take it before entering the clearing, or are you holding on to it in case violence I, erupts? In case violence erupts. Okay. For sure. That's like a duck and cover, then take the sure. shot kind of thing. You walk out. Briar is standing atop his ship, rifle in hand, aimed vaguely in your direction. Uh, it's not actually trained, but it, with a flick of his wrist and a squeeze of his trigger, he could blow you off the map. Easily. <clears throat> he uh, calls down. So, um... Let's talk, because apparently we couldn't do that over comms. Hmm. You uh, killed the pain rock. How'd that shake out? <clears throat> I'm not gonna lie, it was tough. A lot of us are back at the ship hurt real bad. Yeah, I'll bet. So, um, when it died, what happened to its body? I'm gonna hold up the piece. Uh, okay, you hold up, he kind of looks down, uh, it sloshes around. Uh, at this point, um, can you, uh, make, go ahead and make a face adversity? They've done a lot of face adversities, but face adversity with, uh, with inter uh, influence, please. I just want to let you know I'm, I'm shaking right now. <laughs> like me. Good. Cool. That's a 12, baby. <laughs> I can suck it. Terrific. But we're not out of the water yet. So that's, okay. that's he goes, and you just left the rest of it. So wait, out really quick. When we were in the temple, there was, and it was like the tomb part. Did you say there was like a part, like it's like, like a pit? yes? <laughs> I see where you're going. With it. Perfect. Yep. Um, I tried to, I tried to get the rest so to speak, but we kind of, it fell over the side of this pit. If you'd like, I'll tell you all about that. Uh, tempting. Uh, but I want to be sure first. Looks to me like the little thing you've got there is still wiggling. Just... Yeah, it's weird. Hmm. What's that? He gestures to the uh, beacon. Oh, uh, this is how we found the thing, or it's, it emits some sort of signal. So what kind of firepower were you packing in there? Well, certainly nothing as egregiously large Don't... as yours, for sure. All right, listen. Simple answers, Captain. Mm -hmm. I I withdraw my star sword. Ah. I withdraw my plasma pistol. He doesn't care about the uh, plasma pistol, but the star sword he locks onto. He goes. Mm -hmm. Pretty uh, pretty bold of you to go into melee with this thing, huh? Like I said, I've been trained. So you did. Well, shame on me for doubting you. <laughs> okay, uh, and he says, so that just leaves us with one more problem. We're stuck here. You know, I can, mm. my ship's uh, a little shaken up, uh, but I might be able to get it moving again if I had the, the parts needed. And uh, last I checked, your ship was dead in the water, so to speak. Mm. I think there's probably enough parts between the two ships for one of us to leave. And I don't think you're stupid enough to have not put that together yet, too. Where are you planning on getting another, uh, more reactors for your ships? Uh, yeah, Talon, what do you want to do at this point in time? <laughs> um, while this is all going on, uh, I would like to have, uh, snuck around the other side of the clearing. Sure. 
where he's not looking yeah. and uh, try to sneak on board his ship. Okay. Um, you don't need to try. Stealth just lets you do it. <laughs> uh-huh. So you... Uh, his ship is closed, but it is also torn open. Um, there, He's currently in the middle of patching up the X thing. You can see some... Uh, some spare plates have now been banded over it, um, but there's still enough of a hole in that. And you whoosh, into this ship. You hear the beeping and whirring of still active systems of tracking of scanners. Uh, you come in uh, in just one of the corridors and you can navigate your way around his ship. Uh, it's pretty banged up, but it's otherwise a nice class too. Can I disable his gun? <laughs> um, so you make your way to the place where it's basically kind of strapped in uh, where it's kind of wired in and this is literally your thing i'm gonna have you go ahead and uh roll me roll me an expertise let's see how this goes down that's phenomenal (laughs) yeah while this conversation is happening this is perfect (laughs) that is two fives that's 12 (laughs) you uh so uh, absolutely. So this, co- I'll get to you in a second. It takes some time. You're going to start, like, kind of tweaking and working at it. Um, your roles tonight have been exactly what they needed to be, everyone. Um, you are still <laughs> talking with him. And he's in the middle. He just said, I don't think you're stupid enough to have not realized that. So. I, with, I am going to go find the body of the pain Ra, And I'm going to leave this planet. But I need to make sure you're not going to try to get in my way. His gun power is down. <laughs> I'm charging forward. I got my I don't gun out. Star sword and I'm coming in. He drops the gun. My robot's on your ship. He will kill everyone there. If he dies, if, if I die, Telemachus goes haywire. He will kill as many people as he can before he goes down. I'm stopped, and I have my I have the sword sword still on chief. All right. Well, then you're our prisoner, I guess. Uh, he goes like hell. I am. Your crew is my prisoner. We're the ones holding the weapons. No, no. Merrick's gonna lean over and be like, "We did leave Gammon back on the ship, right?" <laughs> Do I hear any of this from inside the ship? Um, I would say you come you come back for the end of that, where he's like, you hear the very the tail end of it. Can I go find this uh, part of the ship that controls the robot? Um, you would know this if it's a true blue robot. It's not control. It's got it's a sen- it's sentient to a degree. It's not controlled. It has its own free will. He okay. can commute. I can't, like, send it a signal that says stand down or anything? Uh, oh, maybe. Um, maybe it would it would basically be comms. You would need to get in touch with it, effectively. It's not hardwired with the ship okay. anyway. Okay. Um. Um, he, he basically says, so he still has his hands up, and he basically goes, I know how this ends. I'm not anyone's prisoner. So either I walk away and my robot hell, you can scrap it for parts once I'm off the planet and see if you can use that to repair your ship. Or it will, this is, this is no longer a negotiation. It can't be. Well. Can I he used, he boosted his signal before can I do that and tell Gammon, warn Gammon? Um, you would need to kind of hack into his ship a little bit, which at the very least will take time. I'm going to say you can start working on that, but let me get back to you shortly. Okay. What do you say? What are you saying you're doing? Uh, is he is he still attached to the ship? Uh, he was never attached to it. His gun was, and he has dropped that. Okay, great. So no, he has not. Good. You could tell us all about it on the way. You didn't hear what I just said, did you? I'm... Captain, I think we're going to have to kill him. I think you're going to have to try. Uh, at this point, he has been on top of his ship. He's going to uh, jump into the like hatch, which would, like leads him out there, and vanish into the ship. Uh, and at this point, I'm going to uh, cut away. 
to the ship that Halcyon is on. Because there have been things happening while you've been busy. Um, Halcyon, what have you been doing in the meanwhile? Uh, probably the first thing that I'm going to do is um, walk with Hugo back to their quarters and make sure they're all like calmed down. You know, maybe like give them a milk and in- um, kill a sour version of like milk and honey mm-hmm. right before bed. Sure thing. <laughs> Just like calm down. It's a- you're okay. It's okay. Thank you, Doctor. Get some sleep. I- Appreciate your presence. I don't like being off. I don't like being on planet, but I'm going to curl up in a ball now. Thank you. Yep, no worries. I, and as he curls up into a ball, uh, he'll, Hal will, you know, cover him with the blankets or whatever. Mm-hmm. Just kind of tuck him in. Okay. Um, and then he will go around to um, uh, the plasma gas's name. It starts with Dexius. Vexius, uh, go to kind of where Vexius stays. Vexius usually sure. stays in the ship, but the power's down now. You actually haven't seen him since everything popped off. You haven't seen where Vexius went. You don't really know where he hangs out when he's not in the ship. Okay. Uh, I feel he normally hangs out on the bridge. So Hal is going to go to the bridge and just get kind of give a call out of uh, Vexius. You here? Do, do, Are you okay? Do, do, do. Gavin comes into the room. What's up? What's happening? You're not Vexius. No, I'm not. Gammon, I am. But I appreciate your presence. Um, have you seen Vexius around? I think he went to his room. Isn't the ship his room? Yeah, but he has like a room room too. He just doesn't really go there very often. I'm probably not supposed to... No shit. He's just around... <laughs> he doesn't really like per- his personal space being invaded, so I probably shouldn't have said that. Um, can you pretend you didn't? Can I? That's fine. I'm going to. At this point in time, you hear the whirring of treads of something moving through the ship. That's not the sound personal quarters make. Um, the jig, jig is up. up. The jig, jig is up. up. The, the jig, jig is up. up. You hear this uh, robot voice getting closer and closer uh, to the hull. Gammon, <laughs> it's go time. He see, he <laughs> takes cover behind one of the things and uh, basically motions for you. To, they take cover behind one of the one of like the consoles and moves for you to do the same. Uh, ha, uh yeah, Hal definitely does, and um, but it may be kind of in more a slightly more exposed position. Okay. To just kind of maybe draw attention away from where Gammon could be. Okay, uh, you, great. I love that uh, idea. So um, that is, I'm going to say, this is the equivalent of fighting, but you're fighting with intelligence instead, which means it is going to put you in danger, but potentially open it up. Um, Telemachus bursts into the room. Uh, Again, his arms have many different kind of things, like a claw on one, a little, like, pistol on one. But at this point, um, his little, like, pistol arm is aimed, and his uh, two of his claw arms are holding a pretty imposing-looking rifle. Uh, And he just bursts in and just goes, Eat plasma, motherfuckers! Uh, And just starts spraying it onto the ship. He is going to aim at you first, so go ahead and roll face adversity with... um, I'm going to tell you what... uh, because it is this is intelligence, but you are going to need to dodge as well. So do two rolls for me. First intelligence, second um, finesse. <laughs> okay. So I know this is a complete meta gaming, but uh, is anybody else considering hiring this this kind of episode afterwards? Like, <laughs> I was hoping to reprogram it and get it on. Our <laughs> I would love that. I'd like the cut of his jib. <laughs> so the- it's like a metal wally. <laughs> So that's a seven for the intelligence. Okay. Roll. Yeah, that's how math works. Great. Two plus three plus two is seven. And then the finesse. Eight. Uh, Okay. So mixed on both, which is going to have some consequences. You are going to take a hit no matter what. That's one of your consequences. You're taking a hit in this. Um, One of the blasts is going to catch you before you can get behind that cover. Um, On that note, however... I will give you a choice. You can regroup and try again, 
You get the idea your plan was marginally successful, giving Gammon, like, a shot. Gammon will probably take a hit in, re in kind if he reveals himself now. It's up to you. If you motion to Gammon, Gammon can shoot and get a shot off, but we'll also take a hit. If you buy your time, Gammon will retain cover, but then you're back to square one. Um, how will kind of motion give, like, a stand-down motion? Um... And one second, I need to let the cat out of the room. Okay, great. Uh, that's cool. This is a battle. We're doing rapid cutting. I'm going to cut back to the other crew. So uh, Briar has just jumped into the ship uh, and is moving quickly towards his helm, where you are trying, uh, Talon, you are trying to reprogram, uh, trying to hack into his things right now, um, which you have, I'm going to say you've done successful. You know how to hack some comms. But he shows up and sees you. And my shoulder gun points at <laughs> Uh, and it's literally your shoulder gun points and he draws a pistol at the same time. Uh, and there's a moment's pause. Are, are you doing anything in this pause? Um, I'm just going to keep working. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what a big, big power move. Big power move. That, that is the, the whole continuing to do what you're not supposed to be doing while maintaining eye contact is the most cat move I have ever heard. <laughs> I couldn't have couldn't have picked a better person to play this part. Um, Ethan, I'm going to need right. you to... Um, he's going to fire. At this point, he sees you okay. working and he's going to shoot. He's trying to blast your gun arm off, basically, to uh, incapacitate you. Um, I assume you're just trying to dodge this. Are you returning fire as part of the dodge, or are you just focusing on... Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Then go ahead and roll... Uh, I'm going to call this force, then. Uh, I know. I know. This is about this is about speed and just a quick close gun fight more than it is... Wouldn't that be finesse, then? Mm-mm. It's, it's, it, this is, when, this is um, just opening fire... Two people opening fire on each other. When <sighs> fire, like, goes down into the ship, I'm like bolt thing to like get to where he is and like try to guesstimate where he's going <sighs> and try to stab through the ship <laughs> so I'm running so I love all of this what did you get uh, Ethan I rolled an 11 and my negative 1 makes that a 10 Jesus these <laughs> oh rolls guys God. coming together for the finale right now <laughs> you um, both sidestep and blast his gun out of the hand. Uh, his gun goes flying, disarmed at the same time. Um, and uh, at this point, I don't, I don't even want to roll because again, he's disarmed. You guys kind of have the situation unlocked anyway. You could kill him if you wanted to. So at this point, he goes to dive for his gun, and a star sword goes through his foot. He goes, like, ah! screams and topples to the ground. Uh, he is not doing well in this scenario. This is did not go go in his favor. Um, I'm sorry. I'm still going to get used to letting you guys paint the scenes with stuff like this. I should have asked you how you wanted to do that, Ethan. I apologize. Oh, no, that's fine. Uh, I'll, I'll work on that. Just the whole time, just... <laughs> just <laughs> typing away as your, your gun does its thing. Uh, Briar collapses, uh, meaning the only threat left uh, before you guys uh, kind of take care of him, because he's, he's done, is uh, on the bridge. So Gammon is holding. But I be... Can I say a flashy one-liner? Please towards? say a flashy <laughs> one-liner. Please do. Thank you. So I imagine the star, it's like kind of like the, <laughs> it's the big Naruto run move with like the arms behind and like this, the sword in one hand. And then it just like comes in and like stabs. And when it hits something and he hears like the scream, it's going to like <laughs> be like an unshi. And he's going to say, Don't fuck with our captain. Crushing it, crushing it, crushing it. Um, uh, so we're back on the bridge. Uh, Halcyon and Gammon. Gammon's still hunkered down, waiting for your signal. Uh, Hal is going to give a, you know, at ease, not at ease, but just like, wait for a minute. And meanwhile, just shooting off the bridge. Um, and you fuckers are gonna burn in space hell. <laughs> um, Hal is just going to scream, not knowing where Vexius's room is, or if Vexius is even on the ship. Just yell, Vexius, we could really use a hand on the bridge. Um, and, and scream that, and then, um, 
kind of make a, a dash to another bit of cover, trying to draw attention away from Galen. Can you roll influence uh, on this for me, please? Oh, no. <laughs> That's my negative one model. Hey, at least you don't have disadvantage. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so he is going to continue. He's not, Vexius is not going to make any sort of sign. Um, and at this point, uh, Telemachus is going to turn the rifle and just get a full blast out on you, uh, without adjusting his course whatsoever. I mean, he is going to keep firing, but he's going to get several clean shots on you as you go. Um, moving to the next cover was the next part. I will, um... No, that, that was your check. Go ahead and brace for impact. It would have been a miss no matter what you what stat that was. Okay. Brace for impact. You have uh, plus one from the armored. And plus one, or yeah, plus one from Malleus. So that's a plus two. Good. Yes. Um, so when, uh, a, a, in the first round of this uh, combat, when I got kind of like a grazing shot, that doesn't count for anything, right? No. For like an injury. Uh, okay. wait, wait, oh my God, it should have. I totally forgot. You were supposed to brace. We can roll for that now. Yeah, too. do two brace for impacts. So let's see how this goes down. Okay, first one. That was the other consequence. I, I missed it. Come on, go in the tray. Thank you. Okay, so the first one is a 12. So that's one fewer, which is great. I'll describe them both at once. Go ahead and roll the other one. Then second one is a five. Do you Are, you sporting, it, are you sporting any injuries already? Uh, I have a single minor injury uh, from the dislocated shoulder, which I fixed technically, but I'm not sure if that still counts. Um, it, I believe I said I believe I said it. Um, I got rid of that injury for you, so which okay, is good because otherwise that would be upgraded to major. So the first one is it is a glancing blow uh, with your it reduces the damage of a plasma thing, which would be a major injury down to a minor injury as it sort of uh, kind of slices through some of your uh, flesh a little bit on the arm. It stings really badly, but it's not detrimental otherwise in other, any other way. However, that sort of searing plasma damage is incredibly dangerous, say to a bone which will take a long time to recover and is what is considered a severe injury, I believe. So which of your bones is getting vaporized right now? Um, okay, so I do, the toughness feat would not, where I can suffer two injuries of the same severity does not apply. Here. I mean, it's, it's good, okay, cool. it's good news for sure, but it's not gonna stop your bone. It's gonna stop your, save your bone. Yeah. Um, uh, Sean, if, so yeah, yeah, sorry, I realized I was gonna, yeah, the next severe basically wouldn't kill you, right? You can take yeah. another shot like that and still be Which standing. Is basically. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, depending on whether you lose your. But let me know what went what went down. <laughs> um. Yeah. So I would say probably his right arm, like his right upper arm, got hit as Hal is like getting up and like. To starting to turn Great. to run. You turn to dash and just that you feel you have treated wounds like this before and you do not envy the people they happen to. Uh, as your the kind of malleus plating gives way and just tears through that. There's a huge chunk of your bone that is straight gone and will need to be artificially replaced. <sighs> it is bad news. You collapse to the ground behind your cover, but I am going to say, in spite of the grievous fallback, you do have a highly trained military crew member with you, and that is going to buy him enough time. Uh, Gammon was going to say a cool one-liner, but he, they are now too concerned about making sure you're okay, so they are going to remind the one-liner they were going to say, which is that they still have their explosive shot left from when their shotgun got upgraded all that time back. <laughs> They're going to spring from their cover and point-blank blast Telemachus Kingdom Come. You hear a massive explosion. Uh, you may have suffered an injury, but you bought Gamma the time needed. And Telemachus go, it goes, <laughs> and is down. Repairable, maybe. Definitely incapacitated. Um, Briar is lying, grabbing his foot as Talon. You can get through on the comms now at the time this fight is finishing. Gamma? Yeah. Did you kill the robot? Yeah. Um, All right, cool. Our doctor is um, bleeding a lot. I mean, not bleeding. Can you bleed? You don't bleed from plasma. What is that? Is that? He, he, he pokes it's... at the wound. 
What is that? <laughs> it's cauterized. It's still very tender, Gammon. I'm gonna need some time alone to fix this, but but everything's I'm cool alive. now. Um, I'm alive. And Gammon's alive. You uh, at this point, I imagine Captain and uh, everyone makes their way onto the ship. So you, you can see Briar, who's been stabbed through the foot. You can see Talon in control of the situation. Everything seems to have been resolved. And Captain, the, uh, Briar says, All right, guess I'm a prisoner. You hear a horrific sound of metal being rent. He tenses up. You didn't kill the pain, Oh, yeah, not prisoner. I looked down at the, the the sphere and I said, so you know what I meant about uh, the whole tracking thing? It's not us tracking it. It's it tracking this. Briar, <laughs> Briar did not look afraid <laughs> when you stabbed him. Briar didn't look afraid when his gun got disabled. Briar believed he had some element of control until this very moment. And for the first time, you see terror in his eyes. As the side... Of, of the uh, kind of hull, or what, not, I mean, it hull, but um, deck, yeah. bridge, the bridge. The, the side of the bridge is ripped in an X shape open. You see the pain rod's mouth stretch incredibly wide as it just kind of continues that carving motion outwards. And when it snaps back down, <laughs> briars in four pieces. Blood splatters across the entirety of the deck of his ship. And he's done. Can I make can I make a sick one liner now too? <laughs> Everyone else has gotten one. I don't see why you should avoid it. <laughs> so to reflect on him saying, I guess I you're, I'm your prisoner now, and that whole thing mm -hmm. happened, I would have been I would have said, It's not our call to make. Nice! Not our call to make. <laughs> and he's done. I'll be honest, it is not as dope as uh, Halifax's and Rose <laughs> one-liners were, but I'll bring up the comparison. Everyone's one-liners ruled. Um, and <laughs> with that, I think it's what we're going to have to call it for today. <laughs> Damn. Uh, we will, oh we will do a, let's do a quick experience breakdown, and then we will resolve the aftermath of all this uh, with a much chiller session next week. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, you've earned it. Uh, cool. So, so cool. All right, let's go through the um, experience tracks really quick. Um, I'll go in backwards order that I did last time. Um, so, uh, Halifax. Was that the cargo delivery one? It was. Um, a passenger reaches a destination. Uh, yeah, oh, so... Passenger. So... Ah. Did, did the... Does the creature count? He... The, <laughs> the pain raw has not... This is not oh. gone anywhere just yet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Captain? A uh, ludicrous stunt turns the tides? I, I want to say several times. I, specifically... I mean, specifically yeah. Halcyons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so we'll mark an experience for that one for sure. Um, is that five now? Uh, that would that would be five, five. So that would be a level. Yeah, okay. So everyone can get rid of those five uh, and pick a new move from whatever that advancement track was from. But handle that later. Let's get more experience now. Um, so uh, Ethan, uh, was there a breakage? I mean, the sh the ship was torn open, but I wouldn't really count that one as a breakage this time. I don't think so. Telemachus broke. That was a, that was a violent <laughs> that was a violent explosion in battle. I don't. That, that's like the equivalent of killing a guy. Uh, no go on that one. Um, Dan? Um, a life is saved or destroyed by science. Are robots alive? <laughs> um, I would uh, argue that drawing the pain rod to the ship with the tracker and him killing Briar was a life destroyed by science. Yeah, especially because yeah. the scientist is the one that did I would. I'd allow that. I'll mark, I'll mark an experience there. I've, I've used my 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 archaeology for evil. You did what Shouldn't was necessary. Possible. You did what was necessary. Like doctors, you also have a code. Amazing, amazing. Uh, and finally, uh, Ro. Um, definitely, I would say that that was like a big portion of the of the thing was a forgotten place was excavated. Absolutely. Like the oh, yeah. the the burial place of a now dead civilization is like so. 
I gotta get I gotta get so home and to back get back to the academy with all this. Fantastic, was beautiful by the way. Yes, like that was yeah. such a beautiful. It's it reminded me of like watching Atlantis, the the movie. Atlantis. <laughs> oh yes, yeah. it was so whimsical and good. Or like the Road to El Dorado, it was so yeah. good. Very cool. Glad y'all had fun. So we get three experience, which Atlanta's most underrated Disney movie. That yes. levels you up and gives you two experience towards your, towards your next level. That means you all pick a new move and pick change a different advancement track. So your advancement tracks change, okay. uh, even though some of them never happened. They still all change. Cool. Okay. Cool. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, guys, everyone who tuned in, thank you so much for watching. Uh, really appreciate having you, you here. Uh, please tell all your friends to come come check us out next week. I will be posting this video earlier than next Sunday because I was late last time and I get everyone caught up. Um, thank you uh, to our fearless crew of Freya. You guys rule. This has been a blast. Uh, thank you to chat. Thank you to everyone. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. You're welcome for my cat instincts. Woo! <laughs> <laughs>